convenience store in Seoul. A pack of cigarettes thrown by someone's hand falls onto the counter. The woman demands her money back. The young man behind the counter asks if she has a receipt. The woman says that she only wants to get money for cigarettes, and why does she need a check? Hui Sung replies that why return the cigarettes at all? The woman shouts that the buyer is always right, and if she wants, then they must give her every penny. Hui Sung insists that he needs a receipt that confirms the purchase from their store, and the woman says that she threw it away. Hui Sung refuses to return the money, and the woman says that he really takes his residence document with him every time he leaves the house. Hui Sung is interested, but she always throws away documents about her place of residence, and the woman doesn't know what to answer. The seller says that he needs to make sure that the cigarettes were not bought at a discount in another store, and now the woman does not want to make money on the difference in their store. A woman does not want to hear herself called a liar. She threatens to complain to customer service. A fly swatter flies over the counter. The seller waves it and shouts that the flies have become completely impudent. The woman leaves upset that her plan failed. The salesman with the fly swatter looks after her skeptically. The bell above the door rings, and someone enters the store. The salesman says that Jung Hwan has finally returned, and the man who comes in replies that Hui Sung has done a good job and can go home. Hui Sung notes that the newcomer has a black eye. Jung Hwan replies that he was hurt during sparring. The salesman sadly says that Jung Hwan is just great, goes to school and then plays sports. Jung Hwan replies that they both work and study. Hui Sung asks if being beaten up forever is really that much fun. Jung Hwan says it's hard to describe in words, but it's so addictive, and his friend would understand if he came to training even once. He says that his friend was famous at school, and why doesn't he want to compete in MMA? Hui Sung replies that the art of fighting and fighting are not the same thing, and he gave up. Jung Hwan says that Hui Sung worked out a lot before. He sadly replies that that is why he knows what he's talking about. Then Jung Hwan invites the guy to come cheer for him at the upcoming fight. This Sunday the Amateur League at Fight Club opens, and Jung Hwan will be competing there in a professional competition. And if he wins there, he will become a professional. Jung Hwan says that watching the fight live is much more interesting than on TV, and his comrade promises that he will definitely come. Hui Sung goes home from work. He walks down dark paths and the thought that someone can become a pro in martial arts haunts him. The next day he stands in front of the entrance to the building, where the competition will take place. He walks inside and is surprised by how unorganized and dirty everything is. He wanted to watch some fights, but now he thinks he will only watch Jung Hwan's fight. He enters a room that is crowded with people. They all scream and look intensely at the ring. Just at this time, the fighter in the ring throws a right hand at his opponent. Then he tries to hit him in the eyes, but he jumps back. The fighters strike each other. Then one of them kicks the opponent's neck, and he is declared the winner. He triumphs in the spotlight. The spectators loudly express their approval, shout that the blow was good, and the winner joyfully throws his hands up. Hui Sung looks at this and his fists clench. At this time, Young Hwan approaches him and is glad that Hui Sung came to watch his fight. He says that this place is very cool, and Hui Sung replies that the atmosphere is tense. One of the men who accompany Yong Huan says that they don't have time. Jung Huan invites his friend to celebrate later if he wins, and he agrees. Sung Hyun says that Jung Huan's opponent is in very good shape. The judge introduces the fighters. In the blue team, Jung Huan, red team fighter Choi Siop. The fighters approach the middle of the ring. The fight has begun. The fighters are ready to defeat their opponent. The red fighter immediately rushes to the attack. He hits Jung Hwan with a backhand. He bends over and Choi Siop hits him again. And then she hits him in the face again. Then Jung Hwan hits his opponent in the jaw. And another one in the face, which he misses. Hui Sung watches the fight and notices that Jung Hwan is getting too tense. The fighters exchange blows. One gets hit in the face, then the other. Hui Sung yells for his friend not to tense up so much. At this time, Jung Hwan misses a blow straight to the head and flies off towards the net at the end of the ring. His opponent runs towards him and the decision to finish off his opponent is written on his face. Hui Sung yells for his friend to dodge the blow. But Young Huan no longer has the strength, and again misses the right blow that Choi Seop inflicts. Huang falls and the referee stops the fight. The fight is over. The judge names the winner, Choi Seop. Hui Sung thinks that Huan couldn't withstand the crushing blow to his chin. He unfortunately was defeated, despite his success in professional fights. But Choi Seop attacks his opponent after the fight is over. He beats up the unconscious Huang. The referee pulls Choi away from Huan and shouts that the fight is already over. But Choi pushes the judge away and continues beating Huang. His fist strikes one after another. Huang's trainers call for security, but there is no security nearby. The audience says that this is how he will kill Huang, and Hui Sung runs without hesitation. In one leap he jumps over the barrier, and he clamps his hands on the idiot Choi Siop's neck to pull him away from Huang. He throws Choi's sub into the far corner of the ring, and leans over to Huang to see how he's feeling. Choi is very unhappy that some goat got in his way. 
Viewers warn Hui Sung that danger is behind him. Choi Siop is standing behind the guy and is going to kill him too. Song yells at Juan to wake up. But Juan's gaze is completely empty and unfocused. The dream shouts into the hall for someone to call an ambulance. At this time, Choi Siop attacks him. The dream sees a fist flying straight at his head and manages to intercept him. But he cannot resist the force of the blow and flies into the ring net. Sop runs at him and yells that no one dares to interfere in his fight. Hui Sung blocks his face and gets hit with a series of three punches. The next moment he dodges and the enemy's fist goes past. Choi Siop then knees him in the face. Huang's trainers are outraged how Choi Siop could hit an ordinary person, not a fighter. The referee runs into the ring and demands Choi Siop to stop. He shouts that this time Choi will not get away with a simple suspension. The consequences will be more serious. Hui Sung dodges the killing blow again. He was very angry with that bastard. His fist is clenched and ready to strike. He takes a fighting stance, placing his feet on the floor. And with all his might, he strikes his opponent from below in the chin, wanting him to finally fall away from him. Choi Sub's head fell back and his eyes rolled back. Huang's coaches opened their mouths at this unexpected turn. There was a dull thud as Choi Sub's body hit the floor of the ring. Hui Sung raised his hand in victory, and then he started asking Choi if he was okay. At this time, he was attacked by the guards who finally arrived. They grabbed his arms and legs, despite his cries that he was only defending himself. Hui Sung was carried out of the hall amid his indignant screams. One of the spectators said admiringly that he had found a real diamond. Late in the evening, two comrades were sitting on a bench on the street. They were literally crushed by the events of the day. Hui Sung asked Huan what was heard from the results of the fight. He replied that they were canceled, and Choi Siap was immediately suspended from the wrestling championship competition. Hui Sung asked if this meant that Huang would continue to develop as a professional, but he replied that he did not win the fight and did not improve his qualifications. He thanks Hui for rushing to save him when he was passed out, and Hui Sung says the best thank you would be for Huan to allow him to replace him at the store. Huan says he has another offer for Hui Sung. He invites him to try his hand at boxing. He gives him a business card with the name Chan Yong Wu written on it, a famous fight organizer. Huang says that Zhang Yong Wu was amazed by how Hui Sung took down a major league fighter, and he wants to make him a professional MMA fighter. Hui Sung thinks that such offers don't come often, and Huan confirms this. Hui Sung isn't sure if he can handle it. He tried to play sports in the past, but only brought a lot of problems for everyone. Huang told Hui Sung that he fell in love with boxing because he found the fights fun to watch, and now he has become almost a professional. He's not going to give up, but he doesn't want to be a champion either. He does boxing because it's fun and interesting. Therefore, he does not have a huge dream. He is already doing what he loves. Hui Sung remembered how he beat up the impudent Choi Siop. His hand clenched into a fist. He warmed up, said that it was already late and got ready to leave. In parting, he said that he would start work tomorrow. Huang wished him to do his best. Huang looked at his friend's departing figure, and I saw him enter the ring. This is how he imagined the future of his comrade. He sighed contentedly and leaned back on the bench. Zhang Yang Wu was talking on the phone. His assistant asked if the director had a meeting planned, and Chan replied that he had with the most talked about guy in the major league this season. The assistant said that the internet has gone crazy. Everyone is talking about how an ordinary person knocked out a professional athlete. The assistant asked if the director was really going to make him a pro. After all, this guy was just lucky that he hit a tired athlete. Chang Wu replied that the assistant still had a lot to learn if he thought it was just luck. Choi Siop creates problems, but his ability to recover is higher than the rest. Therefore, even if he was tired from the battle, a simple person would not be able to knock him out with one blow. With these words, the director looked at his watch and realized that he was already late. Chan Wu thought that for a professional, qualities are as important as skills. No one relies on wrestling skills anymore nowadays. Sometimes fighters swear, provoke their opponents, have quick reactions and humor to control the situation and the behavior of the fans. Chan Wu thought that guy had the potential to become a star. Hui Sung came to the interview and asked Chan Wu what he saw in him that made him an offer to become a professional fighter. He invited the guy to watch something. He opened the laptop and showed the recording of the fight. Here Choi Siop is about to knee a guy. And here is the uppercut with which Hui Sung responded to the attack. Hui Sung said he was just lucky. Chan Wu analyzed in detail all the movements of Hui Sung. He transferred all his weight to his left leg. He then fixed his right leg to make it easier to rotate his upper body and waist. The director said that this was not a simple uppercut, but a right uppercut. And after all this, does Hui Sung still think it was just luck? Hui Sung replied that Choi could have taken it out, but he opened up and Song hit him. The director realized that Hui Sung saw that the enemy was open and struck and was glad that his instincts had not failed him. He asked if Hui Sung played sports before. The guy replied that he played baseball for three years in elementary school and six years of high school wrestling. 
Chan Wu understood where his interlocutor got such reactions from, and he directly asked why he didn't do MMA. Hui Sung replied that he wants to try it out, but he knows about the financial aspect. Popularity will not fall from heaven, and if he wants to become a professional, he will need to invest a lot of money, and he does not want to worry his parents because of his ambitions. Chang Wu thought for a moment and then said that these issues can be resolved. Hui Sung listened attentively. Chan Wu continued that the guy doesn't have to worry about the equipment. They provide it. In addition, Hui Sung can work extra hours. He will have to pass a sparring test, and if the CEO likes him, he will be hired. If not, then the guy will continue to live as he lived before this conversation. Hui Sung asked when the sparring would take place, and Chan Wu replied that in a month in Zhang Huan's gym, the sparring would take place there. Hui Sung asked if it was possible to change the test date. Chan Wu replied that of course, because he understands that a month may not be enough for a newbie to train. Hui Sung replied that it would be better to spar today, and director Zhang Wu choked on his coffee. He didn't understand what was wrong with this guy, and at first he thought he had misheard. But Hui Sung confidently confirmed that he was ready to fight today. Chan Wu wanted to hear an explanation of why the test needed to be carried out today. Maybe a beginner doesn't understand that MMA is a serious sport. But Hui Sung replied that he understands everything, but his skills will not improve in a month. The director thought that, strangely enough, it sounded convincing. However, he answered no because he needed to find a sparring partner. So he decided to postpone the test for a week. In addition, he advised Sonu to learn at least the basics of combat this week, and he agreed. At this point, the meeting ended. Chan Wu said that the test would be carried out in a week at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. He asked if Song would regret his decision, and Song confidently replied that he would not regret it. The director thought that the outcome of the newbie test, which had been prepared for a week, was already clear. Soon Hui Sung arrived at the training room. Some of the athletes were pumping iron in the gym. The trainer taught someone to keep their hands closer to their body. Someone was fighting in the ring. Hui Sung noted that the athletes in the ring had amazing punches. His friend Young Huan approached him, accompanied by a man. Huang asked Sun why he stood rooted to the spot. The man introduced himself as team coach Park Sung Hoon. The coach said that he heard that Hui Sung was going to take part in the tests in a week, and wouldn't it be better to refuse these tests? Hui Sung didn't answer, and both friends went to change clothes to start training. The coach thought it was a waste of time. What can you learn in a week? He suggested learning only those strikes that would be necessary in sparring. Coach Park Sung Hoon asked the student, what in his opinion is the most important thing in wrestling? Hui Sung replied that it was a strike, and the coach said that strategies vary but the ability to damage an opponent is the basis of all basics. They were the first to master the jab, and Terraner demonstrated this blow. Hui Sung noted that the blow was weak and clumsy. Then the coach showed another blow, which was much better than the first. Hui Sung really liked him, but the coach said that Hui Sung will learn the first kick. Hui Sung wondered why. Park Sung Hu replied that in MMA, you need to watch not only for strikes, but also for pushing and blocking. In this case, distance plays an important role. The second punch is used primarily in boxing and should have a specific purpose, but in MMA the opponent will be standing nearby, so the second blow will be less effective. Stance is different in MMA and boxing. In MMA the stock is lower and the legs are wider apart. This is where the difference in strikes comes from. The next blow is straight. It is similar to a boxing one and can be alternated with a jab. You need to jab and return your hand to the reverse position. At the same time, turn your body and extend your other arm straight. The trainer continued, When you're done, return your hand to your jaw and place your front hand in front of your face for protection. Hui Sung said that he understood everything. The coach said that this is all his student needs to know at the moment. Hui Sung was taken aback by this turn, but the coach said that if his student mastered these two blows, he would be halfway to victory. And he ordered him to train until his body remembered all the movements. Finally, Coach Park Sung Hu advised Hui Sung to be careful when the bag flies towards him and not to injure his wrist and the coach left. Huang asked, his trainer it was not enough, he told his friend, and the trainer replied that it was enough. Huang continued to insist that theory alone was not enough, and the coach asked what would change if he trained Hui Sung well. Even if you have talent, it is impossible to learn everything in one week. Huang objected that Hui Sung was his friend, and the coach said that if Song wasn't Huang's friend, then the coach wouldn't even tell him the theory. And in general, stop hoping for a miracle, let the guys train and go home. Hui Sung began training alone. He practiced endless jabs, then straight punches, then combinations of punches. The coach and Huang looked at Hui Sung in amazement, and the coach could not believe that there was a newcomer in front of him. Huang also couldn't believe that his friend was so good. The pair cracked and was ready to crumble from Hui Sung's blows. The coach thought things were getting a lot more interesting. Hui Sung practiced kicks, 
so that splinters and foam rubber flew from the equipment. But Park Sung Hoo was unhappy and said that this was ballet and scaring away flies with his feet. He said that Hui Sun was wasting his energy in vain. You need to choose one point and aim at it. You need to learn how to kick quickly. The training continued. At this time, a large man entered the hall. The trainer asked him how the seminar went. The man replied that it was as usual. The man asked who this new guy was, and the coach said that this was the one that Director Chan noticed. The coach introduced Hui Sung to leader Huang Sang-guk. Sang-guk asked the new guy if he liked MMA. Hui Sung replied that he often watches tournaments and finds it fun. Suddenly he felt that the room became very cold. Sang-guk advised Hui Sung to try hard, and then he will achieve good results. The day before the test, Hui Sung was overcome by doubts. He had one day left, but he could not master the correct blow. No matter how hard he tried, he didn't know what he was thinking when he said he'd be ready in a week. Sang-guk entered the hall and asked what the guy was doing in the hall so late. Hui Sung said he couldn't hit the shot correctly. Then Sang-guk asked to show how Hui Sung performs a kick. Hui asked how old the man was, but he told him to shut up and do as he was told. Hui Sung swung and kicked the bag. He asked Sang-guk what he thought about his punch. Sang-guk replied that the blow was bad. He noted that Hui Sung only uses his legs, so his kick is very slow. You need to use your abdominal muscles. The hips work together with the abdominal cavity. Hui Sun uses only half of the muscles, and it is impossible to achieve success this way. Sang Guk said that he will now show Hui Sung how to work correctly. You need to tighten your abdominal muscles to work your hips well, and raise your legs as soon as you begin to turn your waist. Simultaneously with these words, Sang Guk dealt a crushing blow to the bag. This is exactly the kind of strike Hui Sung imagined, but did not know how to do it correctly. Sang Guk asked how the newcomer liked the blow, and Hui Sung said that it was amazing. And apparently Sang Guk is a seasoned fighter. Hui Sung prepared to throw a punch and tensed his abdominal muscles. He made a U-turn and swung his leg. This time the blow was much stronger. Sang Guk noted that it turned out much better now. Sang Guk said that now he understood why Director Zhang was interested in the guy. After all, he grasps everything the first time. And he thought that for Hui Sung it was just fun. Song couldn't understand why there was suddenly entertainment. And Sang Guk reminded him that Hui Song said it himself. The guy remembered his words and felt ashamed, but Sang Guk said that he also does MMA because it is fun and interesting. Sang Guk told Hui Sung to finish and go rest. Hui Sung thanked Sang Guk from the bottom of his heart for the lesson. Sang Guk said that since the guy is on their team, he must do everything right, and wished him good luck in tomorrow's test. The next day, Hui Sung is warming up for the test. Next to him, an unfamiliar fighter is also preparing for sparring and listens carefully to the coach. The director of the elite fight club, Kim Seung Yap, enters. He asks about Hui Sung. Is he the guy who does flying kicks? Chang Wu confirms this. Huang supports his friend and advises him to relax and do everything as in training. The coach advises Hui Sung's opponent to fight easier so as not to hurt the newcomer. But he replies that he is in the featherweight category and the newcomer will not be harmed by him. But he wants to show the newcomer his place and show who is the strongest here. The fighters go to the center of the ring. Hui Sung closed his eyes and the coach encourages him and says that this is sparring without fighting, in which there are many restrictions and opponents fight while they are on their feet, like in boxing. Three rounds of two minutes each. Hui Sung stands with his eyes closed and tries to regain his inner peace. The gong sounds and the fight begins. The enemy immediately attacks Hui Sung, and he dodges a series of blows. The fighter hits Hui Sung with his right hand, but he manages to dodge. Hui Sung also successfully blocks a kick. Director Kim notes that the guy has very good defense. Hui Sung jumps to the other corner of the ring. His opponent thinks that the new guy is running away and runs to attack. He throws a hard punch right at Hui Sung's face. This is immediately followed by a strong blow to the body. And without a break, the opponent carries out a series of four jabs. Director Kim says the new guy is being hit too hard. Chan Wu replies that the guy hasn't lost yet. However, Chan Wu begins to doubt the success of the battle. The enemy attacks Hui Sung again, who retreats again. But in the heat of the attack, he accidentally opens up and Hui Sung hits him with a strong blow from below. Director Kim is impressed by the blow, and Jang Wu is triumphant. Nice hit. The enemy becomes disorientated for several seconds. Director Kim interested, but he quickly comes to his senses and delivers a direct blow. Hui Sung turns and dodges. At the same time, he instantly hits the opponent with his right hand in the jaw, and barely dodges the next blow. Hui Sung's opponent misses another blow to the jaw, and then Hui Sung gets hit in the head. Huang watches the fight with Sung Guk, and happily says that his friend does not give in even to a professional fighter. Sung Guk doesn't express his feelings, but he's also happy for the new guy and wishes him victory. The first round is over. Break. The fighters disperse to the corners of the ring. Hui Sung thinks that the beginning of the fight was strong. It's hard but fun to get hit and hit yourself, 
and thinks that he should have taken up this matter earlier. Second round. The fighters met in the middle of the ring and immediately began showering each other with blows. But Hui Sung is starting to run out of steam. His breathing is labored and he is tired. Director Kim says that Hui Sung lacks experience and is not strong enough to focus on the fight. The opponent again carries out a series of four jabs. Hui Sung sets up defense. He doesn't move anymore, he just defends himself. The enemy laughs and shouts that he thought the new guy was better. He again carries out a series of three strikes. Hui Sung again puts up a defense and nothing more. The gong sounds and the second round comes to an end. Hui Sung falls exhausted onto a stool in his corner of the ring. Director Kim believes that there is nothing to see here and is about to leave. Chan Wu agrees with him. Director Kim notes that the new guy has some talent and advises Chang Wu to give him a good coach. But then a voice is heard, to which both club leaders turn. Song Kook angrily asks Hui Sung what his behavior in the ring means. He says that only a jerk cuts his competitors some slack. Does Hui Sung's opponent not understand what concessions we are talking about? Song Kook continues his speech and says that MMA is a sport for real men, and one must act decisively and strongly. Don't try to help your opponent. Hui Sung throws off the helmet that kept getting in his way. The final round begins. Director Kim decides to take another look. Hui Sung says that he has gotten rid of the ballast and is ready to fight seriously. He enters the ring where his opponent is already waiting for him. The enemy notes that Hui Sung has changed a lot in those few minutes. Despite the fact that Hui Sung was beaten by his opponent both rounds, he is now relaxed and calm. Hui Sung's opponent stands up and is ready to continue sparring. He throws a punch but Hui Sung dodges, and it starts to move strangely. It feels like it's hot for him to stand on the floor. Chan Wu is in complete despair. He understands that it will no longer be possible to sign a contract with this guy. Hui Sung's opponent decides to finish off the new guy and end the fight. He runs up close to the newcomer, and he receives a blow of monstrous force, which throws him to the other end of the ring. Sung Guk is surprised that the pro missed the shot so easily. The fighter throws a left hand, but Hui Sung ducks under the arm. The enemy is about to strike again, and hopes that it will be the last in this battle. But Hui Sung dodges this blow as well, and strikes the enemy's body from a very awkward position. He immediately jumps away from his opponent, who cannot reach him. He doesn't understand what the newcomer's tactics are and seems confused. And Hui Sung calls his opponent to him with a smile. Hui Sung's opponent is very angry about this method of fighting. He lunges towards Hui Sung, but his blow misses the target. He throws rights and lefts, straights and jabs, but Hui Sung easily avoids all the blows. An experienced professional does not understand how it is possible to dodge all blows. At this time, Hui Sung attacks and the enemy tries to dodge. But Hui Sung hits next to his opponent. This is just a clever feint. Hui Sung prepared to strike again. The fighter blocks to deflect a blow that he cannot dodge. Hui Sung kicks his opponent's side. Director Kim notes that the professional fighter is completely defeated. He looks at Hui Sung's fingertips, his feet and the expression in his eyes. Director Kim realizes that the newcomer was using a combination of movements that were different from his tempo. He has doubtful but unexpected blows, careless but elastic steps. He has a lightness of movement that balances between roughness and dexterity. Director Kim wonders how a rookie can fight with such determination and what kind of style does he have. Hui Sung's opponent realizes that he is exhausted and the new guy has overpowered him. But he is not going to lose and rushes to the attack again. And he runs into a strong blow to the jaw. Hui Sung delivers the next blow with his foot in hand at the same time. The fighter gets hit and flies to the side. Hui Sun stands in the ring, and a defeated professional fighter lies nearby. Coach Park Sung Hoon stops the fight and says that Hui Sung can leave the ring. Hui Sung's support group cheerfully greets him. They really enjoyed the fight. Director Kim stops Hui Sung and says that the outcome of the fight was unexpected, and he liked it. Hui Sung thanks his boss. However, the director continues and says that he noticed a bad habit in the new guy. In the final round, he turned the fight into a brawl. The director tells Hui Sung that they are all athletes, not fighters. In sports, there are rules and other things that athletes are required to follow. In the opinion of director Kim, if a person does not see the difference, then he does not deserve the title of athlete. You can be rude and cruel, but you can't cross the line, continues director Kim. Hui Sung listens intently to his boss, but doesn't say a word. The director asks him if the newcomer understands what he is talking about, and Hui Sung replies that he understands that sportsmanship plays a big role. But can't he do everything except illegal moves to win? After all, a loss shows the complete uselessness of an athlete. The director says that they will discuss this later. But now they need to sign the contract. Hui Sung refuses to sign the contract. Director Kim can't believe his ears. Hui Sung says he doesn't think he's cut out to be an elite fight club athlete, and Zhang Wu has a fit at what he hears. Hui Sung asks everyone in the room to forgive him and bows. Evening Seoul? Small cafe. Song Kook is talking on the phone. At this time, 
Hui Sung enters the cafe and apologizes for causing a lot of problems. Song Guk is ready to listen to the young man. First, he asks why Hui Sung wanted to join their club. Hui Sung replies that there is no reason. He wanted to because he wanted to. Then Sung Kook asks if the guy wanted to take revenge on director Kim for criticizing his fighting style. But Hui Sung replies that he can tell right from wrong actions. He explains that he has been involved in sports all his life, and his coaches have always demanded that he do as they tell him. They often punish disobedient students. Hui Sung believes that talking, you must do this, you must do that, kills the individuality of an athlete. But Song Guk is completely different. He told him to fight the way he liked, even if it was brutal. Sung Kook says he just blurted it out when Hui Sung was losing. But Hui Sung believes that it was these words that helped him win. That's why he wants to learn from Sang Guk. Sang Guk is very surprised by this proposal. He says that many people come to MMA for the love of the sport, like Hui Sung. But they leave after a couple of years because MMA is a sport for those who have a lot of money. Therefore, everyone wants to get into the association and earn money there. Hui Sung says that he won't fight for money, but Sung Guk objects and says that 99 people out of 100 give up and leave. Hui Sung thinks that if there is one chance, then he is fine with it. He promises Sung Guk that he will be that one chance and doesn't want to go back to a life that is limited by money. Sung Kook drinks a glass of vodka and asks the guy if he is sure that he will not regret his decision, even when he remains broke. He replies that he will work like a snake or a worm. Sung Kook realizes that this guy won't leave his side and says that they need to strike while the iron is hot and they will start training next week. The more Sung Guk watched Hui Sung, the more interesting this guy seemed to him. He believed that athletes needed pure obsession, but money is a better incentive for athletes. Hui Sung has no financial interest, and Sung Guk didn't know what would happen next, but now he didn't want to let this guy go. Therefore, he invited him to fill out the entrance papers to the association. Hui Sung immediately asked to be given a discount on tuition. This made Sung Guk laugh a lot, and he advised the guy to talk to Coach Park Sung Hoon, who knows what to do. Hui Sung asked if he could postpone the payment because he wanted to file a tax bill on his father's card and Sung Guk said that it was possible. Hui Sung did not stop and demanded more and more discounts, and even to keep a new uniform for himself, and drove Sung Guk to a nervous breakdown. He just tore his new rookie uniform. A week later, Hui Sung came to the gym where he had already trained before. Coach Park Sung Hoon told him to move because they had a lot of work to do. They entered the staff room and the coach offered the new guy coffee. Then he carefully felt Hui Sung. The coach asked how long the guy had not trained, and he answered that about two years. The coach asked how his weight was, and Hui Sung replied that he had gained 7 kilograms, and the weight had stopped there because he was watching his diet. With these questions, the coach wanted to determine which weight category Hui Sung belongs to. He noted that the guy is in good physical shape, and most likely he will fall into the lightweight category. But Hui Sung was worried that he would have to lose 10 kilograms and might lose his stamina. The coach reassured him that he would only lose weight for fights, so there would be no problems. The coach's next question was about training. Usually athletes take a test at the main office and join the club, but Hui Sung is special. He passed without learning the basics or training. Coach Park Sung Hoon was not happy with such a student. He said that a beginner needs to learn jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, wrestling, and train for a fight. Hui Sung listened in horror to the entire list of things he should know. The coach gave the guy a training schedule. On Monday and Thursday, general strength training on Friday and Saturday. Jiu-jitsu on Sunday. A day off. Hui Sung had no questions because he had been involved in sports before. The coach warned that the training would be difficult, but Hui Sung replied that this was not his first training, and he would forgive the coach to be stricter with him. The coach liked the new guy's confidence. They decided to start training right away. Hui Sung was lying on the floor and could not get up. The coach was watching him. Park Sung Hoon said that if his student continued to lie around like this, he would lose his breath, and the student thought that he was going to die. He sat down and that was the end of his strength, the coach asked where his fighting spirit was. Did he really give up on the rookie course? And when preparation for the competition begins, it will be even more difficult. Pump up your abs with a bench press of 90 kilograms, lift weights weighing 28 kilograms with both hands 12 times, then again 12 times, squat with a weight of 140 kilograms. The weight gradually increases with changing tasks. Fighters even in the middleweight category cannot withstand such training. Although the coach laughed at Hui Sung, Deep down, he was surprised that this guy was able to lift this heavy weight. At this time, Hui Sung laughed. He said he liked the sore muscles and feeling tired. Then the coach said that I needed to do some stretching. Hui Sung reminded him that they had already done stretching, and the coach was just making fun of him. At this time, a voice sounded, reminding him that Hui Sung had failed the test of strength. Hui Sung saw who entered the hall and shouted loudly. It was muscle and strength coach Tae Yong Hyun. 
He said that he would conduct the second half of the training. Holding his new student's neck, Coach Hen said they were getting started. Hui Sung realized that he was in trouble and shouted that it was not good to change the coach during training and that he would work everything out with Park Sung Hoon. Hyun asked Turner Park what they would do. Coach Park looked at the guy's pleading face and smiled, and he left the hall, saying that he had finished training and now it was time for Coach Hen. Hui Sung loudly demanded a stretching workout, but no one listened to him. Coach Park walked down the corridor and thought that rarely did anyone have such will, feelings, and perseverance as Hui Sung. It is obvious that he will be the new guy who will lead the market sales in MMA. And the training went on as usual. Coach Hen was yelling, and his student was praying to God to help him survive. The trainer in the ring throws punches at Hui Sung. One jab, two jab, Hui Sung needs to dodge, but the coach is very fast. His training is observed by Coach Park and Jiu-Jitsu coach Lee Su Hook. The trainer in the ring praises Hui Sung for his good job and takes a break. Huang came to his friend to chat about sports and life during a break. Sang Guk enters the training room and everyone greets him happily. He says he has an announcement for everyone. All the athletes gathered to listen to what Sang Guk had to say. Sang Guk raises his hand, which has some papers clutched in it, and asks if everyone knows what this is. Who says this is a proposal? And Sang Guk agrees and says that he has four of them. He stole them thanks to his speed and recruited a group. Hui Sung asks Huan what these offers are, and Huan responds with an invitation to the championship. Four offers means they are invited to four different matches. Hui Sung asked if anyone could participate in the matches, and Huan replied that of course not. This is only possible because the organizers know what kind of show their team can put on. Sang Guk began to announce the names of the athletes who would be participating in the match. Wrestling coach Kang Young Kun, hitting coach Yun Tai Chun, who just held a training session with Hui Sung. Both of these coaches were awarded gold gloves. The third girl was Yu Jin, and Hui Sung thought that she looked the same age as him. Min Yu Jin, winner of X1, won five of five rounds in the 52 kilogram minimum weight class. She became famous for her awards and received the name Mame Goddess from her fans. Hui Sung thought that he cares about this girl like he cares about the moon. And the last person Sangu called was Hui Sung. The guy was very surprised. All the athletes were no less surprised than he was. Sang Guk asked if anyone had any objections, but there were none. Everyone who received invitations had to approach Coach Park, and Sang Guk approached Hui Sung and offered to talk face to face. In the staff room, Hui Sung said that the team was not very happy that he received the invitation, but Sang Guk replied that it was the organizer's decision. Hui Sung felt happy and anxious at the same time. He asked who the offer came from. Sang Guk replied that it was from X1. X1 is the best organization in Korea. How could they know about Hui Sung? Sang Guk replied that the video of the guy fighting with the pros turned the Central League upside down. They call Hui Sung a monster who destroyed a professional fighter. It turns out that Hui Sung will be debuting, and it is too unexpected for him. But Sang Guk said that there was one problem, and handed Hui Sung a program with the data of the fighters, in which it was written that the fighter Yung Su Cho, 23 years old, height 183 centimeters, weight 87 kilograms, Boy competed in the welterweight division. The match schedule indicated that the fight was scheduled for September 9th. Hui Sung said that this is a mistake, because today is already the 18th of August. But Sang Guk replied that it was a switch match. The first fighter was removed due to injury. Hui Sung will be his replacement. In three weeks, he needs to lose weight, analyze his opponent, and prepare. The enemy is larger, well trained, and more experienced. Training for three months before and after a match is a natural process in MMA. Fighting a top-notch opponent without good physical balance is no different from suicide. But Hui Sung said he was willing to try. Sung Guk said that then all that remains is to sign the contract. When HVM Song was already leaving the training room, Sang Guk asked him if the guy's parents knew that he was participating in MMA competitions. Hui Sung replied that they didn't know. Sung Guk expressed his opinion that parents should be informed and their consent should be obtained. He suggested that the guy ask his parents today and sign a contract tomorrow. Hui Sung was not happy about this proposal, but Sang Guk persuaded him that he needed to tell his parents the truth, and if they did not agree, then the guy could participate another time. Hui Sung doubted whether there would be another time, but he promised to tell his parents everything. After he left, Sang Guk thought that Hui Sung was worried because his sports activities had caused a lot of problems for his parents in the past. Hui Sung came home. Mom was surprised that he came so early. She advised him to take a shower after training to freshen up and wash away the fatigue. Just then, his father jumped up from the couch and punched the air. Mom reacted instantly and grabbed her father's neck. Hui Sung wanted to say something to his parents, but they had no time for their son. Without letting go of his father, the mother advised her son to take a shower first. Finally, 
the whole family gathered in the living room, and Hui Sung told his parents about his plans. Mom said that her son always did what he wanted, but now he asks permission. She continued that he confronted them with the fact that he would do mixed martial arts. The father replied that his son wanted to discuss this with them. Mom was categorically against it. She screamed that she had not slept or eaten at night for ten years so that he could play sports. She stopped communicating with friends and just grew older. And now my son says he wants to be an MMA fighter. How long will she compromise and think only about the fate of her son? Hui Sung told her that he understood what she sacrificed for him, and he was always ashamed of it. Therefore, he wants to get her permission and forgive her to trust him one last time. Mom said that let her son do what he wants and left. The father told his son not to be upset. His mother was just worried about him. Hui Sung already knew this. The father put his hand on his son's shoulder and noted that his son had already grown up. He told his son in confidence that mom is always angry, and his neck is proof of this. Dad agreed with his son's decision, and understood who his son would blame if he didn't do what he wanted. He advised Hui Sun to go to his mom and cheer her up. She needs support. By the way, Hui Song asked his father to lend him his credit card so that he could pay for participation in the team, and also earn points and reduce taxes. Dad hoped that his son would return this money to him, and the son promised to return three times as much when he became famous. The father said that if his son could succeed, he would have done it long ago. Hui Sung said that he would be shown on TV. The father objected that this would never happen. Then Hui Sung said that he would make friends with girl groups. And the father broke down and asked how much money does the future champion need. Hui Sung promised that his father would not regret supporting him. Mom watched her men through the crack of the door. MMA Association Training Hall. An athlete practices blows with a huge hammer. He finished shadowing and threw the hammer aside. This is team member Saul Jung Soo Cho. And he asks the coach if they found him a partner. For two weeks, they can't find a replacement for a fighter who was eliminated due to injury. This is already ridiculous. The coach advises him not to strain himself so as not to clog his muscles. But Chan says that if this continues, all his efforts will be in vain. The coach promises that he will call and find out, and thinks that his ward has a difficult character. Finally, the bell rings, and the coach is discussing something on the phone. He tells Zhang Wu that a replacement has been found. Chan was very happy when he heard this. The coach says that this is some Hui Sung, and he has never heard of this guy. The coach isn't even sure if this Hui Sung is worth it in any league. But Young doesn't care. Neo gained a fighting spirit and went to train. In another gym, Hui Sung was training in the same way. Coach Park called Hui Sun into the coaching room to explain some details to him before signing the contract. He said the prize money was divided nine to one. Hui Sun takes nine parts. One part is taken by the audience. Hui Sung heard that usually the winner gets seven pieces, and the hall takes three. Their director, Sangguk, believes that his athletes are a priority, and does so. The contract is one time. The prize fund is two million won. The winner receives another million won. An athlete needs to monitor his weight. If Hui Sun weighs more than allowed, he will pay a fine of 30 or even 100% of the prize fund. After all, it is only the fighter's fault that he weighs a lot. Hui Sun asked how much he would get if he wins. The coach said that part of the prize fund will go to taxes, 10% will go to the organization itself, and tax will also be paid. 700,000 won will go to three companies that support the club, and the winner will receive 3,300,000 won. Hui Sung was drooling, because he couldn't earn even 5 million working in a store. But here he was making so much money for one fight. Coach Park asked Hui Sung if he was going to quit after this competition, but Hui Sung firmly said that he would continue. Then the coach said that if the guy didn't try, he wouldn't have any more opportunities. Organizations do not engage in charity. They never waste money. Everything is tied to the show and success. You can't just win and lose fights. You need to know how to win the audience's attention. This is the only way fighters become world famous. If Hui Sung doesn't have enough skills, let him show his confidence and fortitude. The coach said that Hui Sung needs to learn strategies and tactics to defeat Jung Soo Cho. The sport is wrestling, and Hui Sung started training. The fighter who was put into sparring with Hui Sung rushed to attack. Hui Sung put up blocks, but the fighter deftly bypassed them and squeezed the guy in a vice. The coach noted all of Hui Sung's mistakes and was indignant that he so easily allowed his opponent to make a pass. Hui Sung recalled a conversation with his coach in which he said that wrestling was suitable for delivering crushing blows and would be included in his training. Hui Sung's opponent Jung Soo Cho's style is simple. From attacks to captures, he knows well how to avoid them. He understands the enemy well and is quite trained. He is blessed with a good physique and is very experienced. He would definitely use grips. The coach was sure that Hui Sung would not be able to even extend his fist, not to mention the fact that his stamina would immediately decrease. Hui Sung said that he had never wrestled before. The coach was surprised, 
because Hui Sung said that he was engaged in Korean wrestling. Suriam is the oldest sport in Korea. The goal of the fight is to knock the opponent over onto the sand, using the strength of the arms, legs, and back. Hui Sung said that he would beat anyone in Suriam, and the coach replied that then he would master wrestling. To begin with, the coach put Yang Kun in sparring with Hui Sung, and now the guy fought with him. He felt like he was fighting a gorilla, and his stamina was melting away like ice in the sun. The enemy squeezed the grip with all his might. Hui Sung hits Yang Kun's leg with his heel, and he lost his balance. Hui Sung managed to escape the grip and jumped to the side. He attacked his opponent, and Yang Kun realized that this guy was very good in battle. Then Hui Sung made a tackle at the opponent's feet. He picked him up and tried to throw him down. The coach who watched the fight with Park said that the guy is not inferior to Yang Kun. He uses grips well and keeps his balance. He will easily excel in jiu-jitsu. But Hui Sung's opponent is a veteran of fighting in large weight categories. However, he found it difficult to resist Hui Sung. Both athletes tried to knock each other down. Yang Kun lifted Hui Sung into the air and noted to himself that his upper body defense was weak. But Hui Sung hit his opponent under the knee with his heel. Then he hit me in the thigh, and he freed himself from the grip, throwing Yang Kun aside. It was an unconventional move, and the opponent noted it. Yang Ku took a fighting stance and prepared for a new attack. He remembered that before this, Hui Sung had blocked all his grabs and knockdowns. He told Hui Sung that he knows a few moves. Hui Sung replied that he had a lot more interesting things in store for Yang Kun. The fighters rushed at each other. Coach Park watched and thought that he was wrong when he thought that Hui Sung would be bad at wrestling. The coach was driving Hui Sung in the car to the competition. He asked how much he weighed, and Hui Sung replied that 77 kilograms and 300 grams. X1 allows an advantage of up to 500 grams, so Hui Sung must pass. Sitting next to Hui Sung was Yu Jin, who was also traveling with them. Hui Sung was annoyed that the other fighters could not go, and was rude to the girl. He wanted her not to interfere in the conversation and just sit quietly, because she was taken to keep an eye on things. The coach happily said that he was pleased that the guys had become friends and asked Hui Sung how his friends reacted to the news that he would fight. Hui Sung said that he didn't tell anyone anything. Yu Jin said that the guy was afraid of losing, so he didn't tell anyone. They immediately fought, and the coach thought that these two had already got him. When they entered the hall, Hui Sung was amazed by what he saw. The hall was full of people, the scoreboard was lit, everyone was in joyful anticipation. Hui Sung sat down in the seat that Coach Park indicated to him. Not far from him he saw his rival Yong Su Cho. The coach ordered not to look at the opponent before the stop down. A battle of glances, not to talk or greet him. Tomorrow the duel was supposed to take place, and the opponents were not supposed to communicate. Both fighters looked ahead, but each felt the presence of the enemy nearby. X1, weighing will begin now. To ensure accurate weighing, each team provides one observer. The coach said that it was time for them to go, and Hui Sung jumped out of his pants to the great amazement of the coach and the girl. He immediately received a strong kick in the ass. Yu Jin asked if he was crazy for taking off his pants before the announcement. Moreover, it's a shame to show panties like his to people. Fighter Hui Sung was invited to come up on stage and walked in his terrible boxers to the shame of the coach and Yu Jin. He calmly passed the way in, and the girl demanded that he put on his pants, but the guy flatly refused. Of course, they had a row again. Then they noticed that everyone was watching their performance. The girl was very embarrassed by the looks. Screaming, idiot, she threw Hui Sung his pants and ran away. Jung Su Cho also calmly went through the way in, and Hui Sung couldn't understand why Yu Jin was so embarrassed. The fighters were called to the stand down and they stared at each other. Jung Su Cho noted that the opponent looks exhausted, his skin is dry, and tomorrow in the ring he may look completely different. Hui Sung thought about whether he could win. Chan asked what the fighter, who is not even in the amateur league, was thinking when he agreed to the fight. Does he want to embarrass himself? Has he ever been to the octagon? Zhang continued to ask, did the director help him, that he made it into the match without participating in the league? These words infuriated Hui Sung. He replied that Chan himself asked for a replacement three weeks before the match, and he was here to fix the problems that Chan himself created. Hui Sung continued that Zhang should thank him for saving this match from failure, and stop whining. If you don't like it, let him refuse the fight. Both fighters became very angry and were ready to bite each other. Jung said that he would smear Hui Sung on the wall, and Hui Sung hit him in the throat. Chan stopped and coughed. He rushed at the guy but was stopped. Hui Sung put on his pants and told Jung Wu that there was a year difference between them, so Jung Wu shouldn't talk so impolitely. Then he stuck his tongue out at his opponent and walked away. Hui Sung came home. Mom was hanging out the laundry and said that his father was invited by the director to go fishing. Hui Sung hugged his mom and said that he had a fight tomorrow. He said he would fight better if he felt her support. Mom was silent, 
and Hui Sung said that tomorrow he will be shown on TV. Mom offered him something to eat so that he would have strength before the fight tomorrow. Hui Sung realized that his mother was on his side and picked her up. The arena of the hall where the fight is to take place. The coach gives the last instructions to his student. After a few minutes, he releases him to rest. The second coach notes that Hui Sung is in good shape. Sung Kuk notes that Hui Sung is completely relaxed. Sung Guk advises the guy to hit Young Su Cho in the face ten times first. Hui Sung has no idea how he can do this in battle. Sang Guk says that he needs to come up with a tactic, move quickly and provoke Young to strike, and then strike. And the second advice is not to panic, and if everything gets out of control, listen to the voice of Coach Pak. He will tell you what to do. Hui Sung asked what to do if his instincts tell him to do the opposite of Coach Park Sung Hoon's advice. Sang Guk said that then let Hui Sung do as he sees fit. Coach Park, who was listening to their conversation, was very surprised. The radio announced that members Hui Sung and Young Soo Cho were being called to the ring. The whole team went to the ring. Hui Sung began warming up before the fight. Coach Park asked Sang Guk why he told Hui Sung not to listen to his advice. Sang Guk replied that he was afraid that if Hui Sung lost because of his coach's advice, he would never return to the sport out of shock. Hui Sung told him that the coaches always told him what to do, and that's why he abandoned the elite club. So Sang Guk decided to let him do what he wants. In addition, he is interested in watching the guy in action. Commentators introduced the participants in the fight. In the blue corner is Lee Hui Sun. This is his debut fight. He has only been training in MMA for 40 days and has not competed in the amateur league. Although he has no career under his belt, he defeated an opponent from the semi-pro league with one punch and excelled in sparring. In the red corner of the ring, fighter Young Soo Cho is gaining popularity, a rising star with three victories under his belt. The public is sure that this time he will have another victory, but will he live up to the expectations of the audience? The main fight is X61, the first fight in the 77 kilogram weight category. In the blue corner is a guy 178 centimeters tall, weighing 77 kilograms, a mysterious athlete, the rising star Li Hui Sun. In the red corner is a fighter 183 centimeters tall and weighing 77 kilograms, the future of Korea in the welterweight division, the wild stallion Young Soo Cho. The opponents met in the center of the ring. Jung Soo Cho noted that the opponent's physical form is very good. He knew that he needed to avoid falling into this guy's grips, and out loud he advised Hui Sung to learn as much experience as possible from this fight, because this fight will be Hui Sung's last. Hui Sung asked if Jung was such a loser that he was still angry. Chon became very angry and growled that he would kill the impudent man. The opponents exchanged blows with gloves. Blue is ready, red is ready. The referee announces the start of the fight. Coach Park notes that Hui Sung isn't nervous, and is sorry to bring a bucket of water and Vaseline beforehand. Then a surprised roar is heard from the stands, and the coach turns to understand what happened. Hui Sung stands, and his opponent is already lying down. What happened? The fighters met in the ring. Chan rushed to the attack. He punched with his left. Hui Sung dodged slightly. Then Chan didn't understand what happened. He missed a powerful right hand from his opponent. And now he is already sitting on the floor. And the commentator shouts that Li Hui Sun took out Young Soo Cho in ten seconds. Jung's trainer yells at him to get his act together and continue the fight. Jung Soo Cho is full and the fight continues. Hui Sung attacks. Jung Soo Cho tells himself that he needs to calm down, and although he lost the initiative, he can get back into his rhythm. Hui Sung attacks, and Jung realizes that the enemy is too fast, and he does not have time to react to him. Hui Sung's fist hits his opponent straight in the face. Chan throws his head back from the blow and loses his orientation. Everything swims before his eyes. His gaze stops. He puts up a defense. But Hui Sung attacks from all sides and Jung misses the blows. A strong blow to the body almost knocks him down. He becomes furious and starts screaming. And he hits without looking, hoping to hit at least somewhere, but Hui Sun easily dodges and strikes back at the opponent's head. Jung Soo Cho screams. Dai goes on the attack and is about to strike with his right hand. But Hui Sung misses the punch under his arm and throws a counterpunch that lands. Jung Soo Cho thinks that it is impossible to move as fast as his opponent. He staggers and loses his balance. With the last of his strength, he pounces on Hui Sung and grabs him. But Hui Sung managed to survive and frees himself from the grip. He throws the enemy away from him. Commentators shout that this is impossible. A fighter who has only been practicing MMA for 40 days is playing with a high-ranking veteran. Who could have predicted such a turn of events? Coach Park thinks that Hui Sung is completely in the lead in the fight, although he is fighting an opponent who surpasses him in size and skill. He wonders how Hui Sung gets such good hits. Hui Sung does not stop but continues to throw such strange blows that his opponent does not know how to react to. His coach notes unconventional movements and irregular strokes. This tactic makes it possible to defeat Young Soo Cho. 
He analyzes that the same thing happened in the fight with Yang Tai Sun. Hui Sung ruined the pace of his opponent's fight. He jumps from normal pace to another. Without preparation, it is impossible to use such a technique. Hui Sung grabs his opponent's head and jumps up, and carries out a clear knee strike in the air. It was a strong blow. Young Su Cho falls after losing his balance. Young Su Cho is about to make a pass, but Hui Sung's legs are too wide apart. The commentator shouts that it's time for Jung Su Cho to wake up and start fighting. Hui Sun easily frees himself from the grip. Hui Xiong tells his opponent not to talk in vain, but to prove his strength in battle. He throws a punch to the chin that causes Jung Su Cho to splatter blood and throw his head back. Hui Sung's support team celebrates, and Jung Su Cho's coaches understand that it's all over. Jung Su Cho stops moving and the referee stops the fight. The fight is over. Commentators shout that such a debut has never happened before. The fight lasted 1 minute and 49 seconds. This is incredible. An undeniable victory. Those who watch this fight will never forget it, the commentator is sure. Now everyone will know the name Lee Hui Sun. Hui Sung is sleeping in the car while Coach Park and Sangu are having a conversation. They both think that Hui Sung was surprisingly good at fighting today. The coach remembered how happy Hui Sung was after the victory. Coach Park was silent during the fight, and people might think he wasn't paying attention to his fighter. Leader Sangguk gave Hui Sung confidence in what he was doing. The next day, Hui Sung walked into a cafe. Young people greeted him there. Hui Sung approached them and asked how they could drink coffee so calmly when a superstar was walking towards them. One young man said that Hui Sung was crazy, while another countered that he had always been like this. They asked him why he fought in the ring in his underpants and received the answer that they were not underpants, but boxers. The guy asked Hui Sung why he didn't tell them everything, and she had to get the news from the internet. Hui Song replied that he only had three weeks to prepare and couldn't think of anything else. Then they asked if friendship over so many school years really meant nothing to him. Another said that Hui Sun is already acting like a star. Hui Sung denied this, although he did not deny that he had already received several admiring glances. For ten years of playing sports, no one paid attention to him. But now, after a two-minute fight, he gets a lot of attention. He asked his friends how they were doing, and Hei Bum replied that he was focusing on part-time work for now and would be returning to college next year. Hui Sung advised him to find a permanent job, but Hei Bum replied that he had just entered college. The second friend said he was going to become a civil servant. The friends started laughing because Min Wu was a slow student. Min Wu recalled that his friends also did not shine with knowledge. Friends remembered their school days and laughed. Hui Sung's phone rang, it was his father. The father asked what his son was doing, and he replied that he was hanging out with friends. My father said that he was at a corporate party and would be late. He asked his son to come home early and have dinner with his mother, because she was now home alone. Hui Sung replied that he was going to come home early. The father told his son that he watched the fight and was proud of him. Hui Sung said goodbye to his friends, although they hoped that they would all hang out together until the morning. They agreed to meet next time. After he left, his friends said that they already knew that Hui Sung was a mama's boy. And Hui Sung, very happy, went home to bring joy to his mother. On the way home, Hui Sung's phone received a message that he had been transferred 11,650,000 won for the match. Hui Sung heard that his fight was chosen for the main night, and for this he received a bonus of 10 million won. He realized that he was poor and could not earn money even after several years of frantic exercise, and his arrival in MMA gave him immediate income. If this happens all the time, he will be able to pay off his debts and give his family the opportunity to live the way they want. He saw his mother bargaining with a shopkeeper asking for a discount on vegetables. He noted that his mother still looks very elegant. In her youth, she was a beauty and had many admirers. He caught up with his mother and hugged her, which scared her very much. He asked why she shops here, because there is a store next to the house, and it takes longer to walk here. Mom replied that it was cheaper here and a walk would be good for her. Hui Sung promised to himself that he would repay his parents for what they did to him a hundredfold. He suggested that Mom have lunch at a restaurant and leave the food for tomorrow. He said he could afford to take her to a restaurant because he earned some money, Mom didn't believe him. He asked what she wanted, sushi, sashimi. They walked down the street and talked. Gangnam Territory Building X1. In the director's office, a man watched a video of the fight between Hui Sung and Jung Soo Cho. At some points, he stopped the recording and looked at something in detail. The man walked into the room, turned on the light, and asked what impression Hui Sun made. The man replied that the guy was a damn good fighter, and he asked if he was really a newbie. He hadn't seen it before. He said that while he was on a business trip in Japan, a real treasure appeared here. The second man said that this treasure was training in team attack. The man remembered that he heard how a newcomer refused money from an elite club and began training with Sangun and Park. The second man said that Lee Hui Sung was 22 years old and had completed his military service. 
he receives two million one and half of the winnings, and for the last fight, he was given a bonus. Then the man said that they need to get Huisung for themselves. We need to offer him better conditions. The man with glasses said he would start this after Chuseok, the Korean autumn holiday. He added that there was another person who caught his attention. He left, thinking that he had not seen the director so excited for a long time. X1 MMA director Han Gun Ho sat alone in his office and thought that Hui Sun was a very good fighter. Hui Sung walked down the street and enjoyed the good weather. He noticed Yu Jin and called out to her. The girl turned around indifferently, looked at him and moved on. He caught up with her and asked if she always walked this way, to which she replied that he should pass by and not enter into conversations with her. Hui Sung snatched the book from the girl's hands. He did not understand what kind of book it was, and the girl angrily replied that it was a book on philosophy. He asked why read this and whether Yu Jin understands what is written there. She replied that the book was written about the concept of wise relationships, the art of living and the history of mankind. Hui Song made a face when he heard about the contents of the book. Yu Jin read the book carefully, and Hui Song looked at her and thought that he couldn't get used to her character. Coach Park came into the room and called the guy. He called him to the director's office and gave him some papers to read. It was a contract from X1, which really surprised Hui Sung. The coach said that Chief X1 contacted them and wanted to sign an official contract with Hui Sung. Hui Sung was surprised because he thought it would happen later. The coach, on the contrary, was not surprised because he was sure that the managers were impressed by his fight. The coach added that, of course, Hui Sung showed class in battle, but only because Yung Soo Cho could not fight in his usual style. Hui Sung pointed out that the coach was right. Fighter Chan simply underestimated Hui Sung and succumbed to provocation. If he had been calm, Hui Sung would have lost the fight. Hui Sung was about to sign the contract, and the coach began to explain the conditions to him. The contract is for three years and three matches. If Hui Sung is unable to play all the matches, the contract will still end only after three years. Hui Sung asked, if he fights three times in a year, does that mean he won't be able to fight for two years? The coach explained that there is a clause in the contract that allows him to participate in other teams. Hui Song will be able to fight in the Singapore organization, for example, which also belongs to X1. Fighter exchanges usually include an agency tax. This clause skips that requirement and allows organizations to negotiate directly with each other to prepare for matches. But the training camps are paid for by the fighters themselves. Hui Sung thought that he would have to pay a lot, and he didn't like it. The coach replied that yes, the prize money may be small, but with a contract a fighter cannot be caught, even if he loses all the fights. Therefore, the coach advised Hui Sung to pay attention to the advantages. X1 always supports its fighters. The next point states that if Hui Sung joins the SFC, the contract will be cancelled. SFC is a rival, so exchanges of fighters are prohibited. SFC has self-proclaimed itself as the best MMA venue. As fighting standards have increased, the reputation of small and medium-sized organizations has correspondingly fallen, but SFC still holds the title of impeccable organization. Hui Sung really liked SFC. The next clause of the contract is fight insurance in case of injury. The fighters pay for it if it is 500,001. If more is needed, then the insurance comes into force. The weight and penalties are the same as everywhere else. Being late is a 20% fine. The first failure to collect is a 50% fine. The second failure is 75%. The third failure is to take away all the prize money. Monitoring weight is a fighter's responsibility. The lowest salary is 1 million won. The basic salary is 2 million won plus 50% of the winnings. If Hui Sung wins a match, then the salary increases by 700,000 won. If he wins all three, then by three and a half won, then by 4,800,000 won, and so on. Hui Sung said that the bonus is less than what he received the first time. The coach said that debut fighters on the X1 undercard get 1 million won. If they make it to the main card, they get 2 million won. If they become amateurs, they need to win eight fights in a row to get that kind of money. Coach Park said that as he sees it, X1 is providing Hui Sung with the best conditions possible. The last clause of the contract talks about the bonus system, the main fight of the night, and it goes to the fighter who arranges the most interesting and exciting fight. Hui Sung already knew this. Finally, the coach told Hui Sung that in the future fights will not be so easy, because now everyone knows what he is capable of. The guy will have to learn fighting in different styles and work hard. Hui Sung was ready for this. The guy signed a contract and became an official X1 athlete. Coach Park had another surprise. On December 31st, there will be Hui Sung's second match, and his opponent will be a group of men with bats and iron rods in their hands surrounded an unarmed guy in an underground parking lot. 
They were aggressive and intended to beat the man, who was preparing to defend himself. The blonde bandit swung his bat and wanted to hit the guy on the head. Toth stepped aside and the blow whistled. At the same time, the man's fist crashed into the blonde bandit's cheekbone. Another bandit attacked him from behind, hoping to knock out his opponent with one blow of his stick. But the man instantly reacted to the danger from behind and slammed his foot into the attacker's jaw. Screaming, you vile bastard, the two gangsters rushed at the guy. They rushed at him with huge leaps and shouted, Die! The guy jumped high and made a U-turn. He fought well with his feet. His blows sent his opponents flying in different directions. He swung his long leg, and another attacker became no longer dangerous for him. The powerful blow sent him flying against the wall. Footsteps were heard in the basement, and the guy turned around at their sound. Opposite him stood a gray-haired man. The fighters prepared for a fight. They rushed at each other with fury, as if they wanted to kill their opponent. The guy missed a kick to the head from a gray-haired man, but in response he managed to land a kick in the enemy's chest. He winced in severe pain, lost my balance and fell to my knees. His opponent froze and silently looked at the bandit who sat in front of him. There was a cry, stop, cut, and the director thanked everyone for filming. The director told actor Sang Hoon that he did a great job. The gray-haired actor, who continued to sit on the ground, was approached by a man from the film crew and asked about his well-being. He said that the guy didn't have to try so hard, he shouldn't overexert himself and expose himself to blows. Extra actor Choi Hai Suk stood up and responded that he didn't want his comrade to get in trouble after helping him get the role. His friend said that when he becomes famous, he will not forget about Choi Hai Sung. At this time, Choi's phone rang and he answered the call. His comrades listened carefully to what he said, that he was very happy and of course agreed. When the conversation ended, Choi Hai Suk told his friend that he had received an offer. He was told he would be on the main card and the battle will take place on December 31st. Here he is, Hui Sung's opponent. Choi Hai Suk was fighting in the ring, and his opponent just landed a right hand. The opponent was very fast and furious. It seemed that the guy had no chance, but he instantly kicked him in the body and immediately delivered a straight left blow to the jaw. The opponent fell, the referee stopped the fight, and Choi Hai Suk became the winner. Coach Park and Hui Sung watched the tape of the fight, and Hui Sung said that he saw a normal fight without holds. The coach said that Choi has only four matches in the amateur league and two matches in the professional league. He is based on karate. He has a third dan and a victory in an international competition behind him. The coach said that such athletes are a real pain in the ass because they attack a lot, as they have enormous endurance and endurance. Endurance is very important. If you are very exhausted, you will not be able to move. Why do professionals who have trained for many years freeze in place and get the full benefit? Because they can't move. For this match, the coach saw three types of dribbling. The first is grappling. Choi is bad at grappling, but so is Huisung, so that's out of the question. Huisung shouted that he had room to grow and he would learn. The coach did not listen to him and said that the second option, to overpower him in stamina, flies by because Huisung has so-so stamina and a small physique. Huisung was convinced that Coach Pa hates him and says bad things. The coach asked Huisung what he thought was the third option, and Huisung replied that he didn't know. He just had to go into the ring and beat his opponent. Coach Park exclaimed that Hui Sung is absolutely right now. Bingo. Hui Sung must attack mercilessly and break through his defenses. Hui Sung grieved that he was not strong enough, otherwise he would not have thought about tactics and attacked until victory. Coach Park said that such a technique exists, and it's called Muay Thai, the strongest attacking technique in the world. It is especially pronounced in the elbow and knee techniques. If you study it well, you can break through Choi Hai Suk's defense. And the coach knows such a Muay Thai specialist. This is Chong Huan. Huang says that the coach asked him to teach Hui Sung the elbow and knee techniques of Muay Thai. But he does not agree with the coach. In mixed martial arts, you cannot hit your opponent with your elbow on the ground. And you cannot do low knee strikes. So such techniques are useless. Huan thinks that Hui Sung needs to study Plam. Hui Sung doesn't understand what this is all about. The flame is one of the grips in Muay Thai. And is very important for good use of elbows and knees. There are many matches in which participants lost due to ignorance of the flame. Example, SFC match for the title of champion of the middleweight category. Rich Flake used a flame on Anthony Silver and finished him off with a knee. Juan is going to teach Hui Sung how to grab first. First, with your left hand, firmly grab the opponent by the neck from behind. The opponent will do the same. Then you need to pull your opponent's left hand down, using your right, and create the desired angle. This is basic flame capture. And when the correct angle is created, you can easily hit your opponent with your elbow. Huang showed exactly how to carry out the strike. He showed that his fingers were now free. Therefore, the one who takes a comfortable position faster will win. 
and he had a brilliant reception. Hui Sung couldn't help it and screamed, so that his friend would act easier, because this is just a training session. Young Huan suggested that he not whine, but think about how he could get out of this position. Hui Sung suggested that he would simply grab the opponent's arms and shake him off, but Huan said that he would knee him while he got out. Will Hui Sung take all the blows without defending himself? Hui Sung said to defend himself first, and Huan asked, and then can we continue to hit him? Huang said that there is no room for Wu Sung to move. Huang will just push his head down harder and hit him hard. Hui Sung asked if he could retreat to avoid the blows. If he lowers his stance and forces the fighter to break the hold, what happens? Huang replied that if his friend brought his head closer to his knee, it would hardly get better, because he would need to hit it perfectly on time. Hui Sung tried to break free from the grip, but he couldn't. Huang said that in the first half of a hold, you can shake off your opponent because the fighter has some strength left and can react quickly. But there is nothing worse than being caught in a fire when you are already tired. Hui Sung asked, what to do if you get caught in a flame? Huang replied that he would show him now and told his friend to grab him. Hui Sung grabbed his friend by the neck with his left hand. Huang made a quick movement with his shoulder, and he threw Hui Sung away from him. He explained that in a fight, you need to tense your neck and back at the right angle before the enemy tries to catch him in the flame. If the opponent is the same height, then Hui Jason's arms will be almost straightened, which will give him an advantage in the shoulders. Under such circumstances, the opponent will not be able to properly use the force, and his hands can be easily shaken off. Huang advised Hui Sung to turn his body and use his shoulders, in a word, to spin. But if the opponent has already completed a grab, and is pressing on you with his muscle mass, neck strength alone will not do. If this happens, one option is to knock the opponent to the floor while he throws knee strikes. Huan again told Hui Sung to grab his neck with both hands and press hard. He said that when you are firmly stuck in the flames, you can put your hand between the opponent's hands. But once the grip is complete, there is very little space between the opponent's hands. He will know what Hui Sung is going to do and will try to stop him. But if you turn your shoulders and force your opponent to look inward, it doesn't matter how little distance there is between the hands, the fighter can always slip out. You need to put your hand inside the grip. Yi Zheng Huan quickly threw Hui Sung away from him. Huang went on to say that it's hard enough to find space to get out of a hold, but the situation can completely change and develop into many different outcomes. Hui Sung saw a new side of his friend and was amazed by his skill. Huang was very pleased with the praise. Hui Sung said that he thought his friend was a so-so fighter, but he's actually good. Huang promised to kick Hui Sung's ass for underestimating his skill. Huang said that training was over for today and shouted to someone that they were already free. Ki Tai Yong appeared on the threshold of the hall, he was in a hurry to train Hui Sung and was very happy about it. Hui Sung did not expect to see this tough coach here at all, and the news about training with him horrified him. He angrily asked his friend how did this butcher end up here. Huang replied that the back and neck muscles are very important for the flame, and Ki Tai Yong is the best strength training coach. Hui Sung shouted why he wasn't asked if he wanted to work with this person. Ki Tai Yong came up behind him and asked what kind of person Hui Sung thought he was. In his mind, Hui Sung considered Ki Tai Yong not a human, but a gorilla. But he said out loud that he couldn't believe that such a busy person would train him personally. Tae Yong said that he did not expect such attentiveness from Hui Sung. He suggested that Hui Sung, since he respects his coach so much, take him for a ride. After all, Hui Sung didn't lie that he respects and loves his coach, who weighs only 120 kilograms. Hui Sung had no choice but to put the trainer on his back and walk with him around the ring. Huang advised his friend to hold on and not die prematurely. Tae Yong said that Huan is happy early he will also roll him around the ring. Huang was not happy about the unscheduled activities. He tried to escape, but Tae Yong deftly jumped onto him from Hui Sung's shoulders. A few days later, Hui Sung was practicing techniques with sparring partner Jung Huan. The enemy tries to make a grab, but Hui Sung blocks the attempt. The fighters exchange blows and dodge them. Hui Sung makes a grab and hits his opponent with his knee. The opponent bends down and is about to slip out of the grip. Hui Sung blocks his hand with his right hand, and at the same time he hits his opponent's side with his knee. The fighter puts his hand under Hui Sung's arms. He manages to break free from the grip, and the fighters fly apart. At this point they decide to end the training. Hui Sung thanks his friend for his help. He says that Hui Sung quickly grasps everything and grows. Hui Sung thinks he is lucky that his comrade Huang is a professional Muay Thai fighter. He feels that his muscle strength and endurance have increased greatly. It was as if he had reached a new level, which was helped by training with Tae Yong. Yu Jin sits next to him. She is very depressed and does not want to communicate. Yu Jin started losing weight a month ago and gave up fast food and salt. It's very difficult for her. She cut out pizza, fried chicken, all snacks. 
She is required to drink six liters of water a day, but now she is prescribing eight liters due to the fact that there are ten days left before the match. Considering her weight, drinking so much water is taking a toll on her morale. Hui Sung encourages the girl and says that there are only ten days left until the match. The girl is irritated and does not want to talk. The coach calls her to drink water and she leaves sadly and irritably. Hui Sun sympathizes with the girl, but then Tae Young comes up and calls him to practice. On his t-shirt it says, I will kill you. Hui Sung thinks that today Turner is pushing him, and he could really die. Time flew by due to training. Hui Sung's team had five matches. They stole an offer from another organization, and Jung Hwan participated in the Central League battle. The other three matches were won without any problems. Yu Jin competed in a difficult match and won in the third round, becoming a rising star in the lightweight division. Jung Hwan blew again. He almost won the match, but he opened his face and missed a counterpunch that knocked him out. Tao Yong was so angry that he said, what if Jung Hwan opens up in battle again? Then the coach will personally tear off his balls. Seoul, Apgu Chiang, Official Hall X1, weigh-in day. Hui Sung feels bad about the weight cut, but the weigh-in today is very simple. Just fighters with trainers and two cameramen. He is invited to weigh in. His weight is 77 kilograms, 200 grams. Fighter Ju Hoseok is called in next. Nobody comes out. He is called again. The fighter comes out of the toilet and apologizes for being late. He looks very exhausted and he is alone, without a trainer. However, he passes the weigh in with a result of 77 and a half kilograms. At this time, Hui Sung is thirsty, but the water bottle was forgotten in the car. Ju hands Hui Sung his water bottle. He says he had a hard time losing weight because of his work. Hui Sung asks what kind of work it is, and Ju replies that he plays a little kind of bully in a movie. He leaves, and Hui Sung notes that his opponent is very polite and well mannered. The trainer says that in the ring he will attack Hui Sung like a pit bull. Hui Sung understands that a match is a match, and he will also give it his all. On the day of the match, Hui Sung munches on tasteless diet food and dreams of fried chicken. Yu Jin comes up to him and says that despite her day off, she came to help Jung Huan, who also has a fight today. She gives Hui Sung a snack of red ginseng and chocolate and says that if eaten an hour before the fight, it will improve stamina and blood circulation. Hui Sung asks why she is giving them to him, and the girl says that they are her leftovers. Hui Sung doesn't believe her, and says that's how she could have said that she found that food on the floor. The girl loses her temper and yells that it was her leftovers, but Hui Sung imitates her, and gets hit in the face with a cabbage leaf. Yu Jin checks her cell phone and says she has to go. Jung Hwan has a lot of things and needs help. Hui Sung peels a cabbage leaf from his face, and thanks the girl for taking care of herself. Yu Jin says he always has to answer this way. She advises him to just go and win the match and not act like an idiot. Hui Sung promises her that he will definitely win. Coaches watch the fights on a screen in the waiting room. They say the fighting today is crazy. Knockout after knockout. Ta Yong notices Hui Sung eating something and asks what it is. Hui Sung says Yu Jin gave it to him and told him to eat it an hour before the match. But it is very tasteless. Even chocolate has a nasty taste. Then he covers his eyes with a towel and says he wants to meditate before the match. Coach Park notes that Hui Sung's calmness worries him. Maybe he is deaf or blind. The coaches talk about thinking positively, while Tae Yong discovers that Hui Sung has been sleeping and yells at him. The 63rd X1 match begins. Fighter Lee Hui Sung enters the blue corner of the ring. Loud applause is heard. The hall is about to explode. Commentators say that everyone remembers his last match, and isn't the athlete's schedule too busy. X1 expects a lot from this fighter, and today we will find out whether their expectations will be met. In the red corner of the ring is fighter Ju Ho Seok. He looks stern and confident. Fighter Ju Ho Seok enters the ring. He looks bigger than Hui Sung. Hui Sung sizes up his opponent and thinks he looks huge, even though they are almost the same height. But he has huge muscles, so he can fight mindlessly. The judge asks about the fighter's readiness. The fight begins and Ju Ho immediately rushes to attack. Lee Hui Sun throws a couple of punches to test his opponent. Ju Ho sneaks closer and holds the line. Li Hui Sun throws a knee, but his strike is blocked by Ju Ho. Hui Sung accidentally opens up, and Zhou Ho seizes the opportunity and hits his opponent right in the body with his left. Hui Sung is angry that he made such a mistake. Hui Sun throws a combination and approaches the edge of the ring. Ju Ho indifferently perceives all the enemy's maneuvers. Hui Sung is surprised that his opponent isn't angry at his combinations. Coach Park yells for Hui Sung to keep up the pace and control Ju Ho's attacks. At this time, Ju Ho goes on the attack and throws a right punch to the opponent's head. The blow stuns Hui Sung and he barely manages to cover himself. The coach thinks that Hui Sung's opponent is much stronger and tougher than they thought. But Hui Sung defends himself against attacks he can't avoid and dodges blows to the head. Meanwhile, Hui Sung once again blocks Ju Ho's attempt to hit him. 
and kicks the opponent into the center of the ring. He puts his foot down to stop the retreat and prepares for the next attack, but he is surprised by his opponent's behavior. Hui Sung lowers his hands, stops defending himself and clenches both fists. Hui Sung's coaches don't understand what he's doing. Has he gone crazy? Why did he suddenly stop defending himself? Hui Sung lowered his hands and a triumphant smile played on his face. Everyone was shocked by his behavior. Commentators are shouting that fighter Li Hui Sun has completely revealed himself. He goes to his opponent, but now is not the time to relax, because now he can fall under a series of attacks from the fighter Zhu Ho. Zhu Ho thinks that now he needs to maintain his rhythm and deplete his opponent's stamina reserves, but then he gets hit in the head and staggers back. He thinks he missed that jab because Hui Sung didn't even move, and he couldn't predict anything. Hui Sung's next move is also lightning fast. He throws a right hand at his opponent's jaw. At first, Zhu Ho thought it was a low kick, but it's a feint, it's actually a left middle kick. Again, this is a bluff. Zhu Ho became entangled in the avalanche of feints and bluffs that Hui Sung unleashed on him. Commentators are screaming that fighter Zhu Ho is being mercilessly deceived by Li Hui Sun, who has led him into a corner. As a result, Zhu Ho retreats and is afraid of blows, although Li Hui Xiong never attacked him. Zhu Hu loses his temper and gets angry, and he is caught by a flying rear jump kick from fighter Li Hui Sung. The blow was so strong that it could break the opponent's blocking arm. And right behind him, Hui Sun throws a high kick aimed at fighter Zhu Ho right in the face. A few minutes ago, Li Hui Sung stood on defense, but now everything has changed. Zhu Ho has to move closer to the edges of the ring. Li Hui Sun doesn't let him move and chases him in a crab position. It seems that he is provoking his opponent. Zhu Ho sees that his opponent has again switched to feints and deceptions. He misses another blow, and the counterpunch misses the target. Coach Park thinks it's hard for Zhu Ho to react when your opponent attacks you and feints and gets into weird timing. Hui Sun pins his opponent against the ring net and throws punches. Zhu Ho understands that his opponent has caught the right moment, and now it will be difficult to get out of this position. Zhu Ho needs to hold out. He is sure that Hui Sung will deal a serious blow soon. He hopes that he will not miss this moment and turn the situation in his favor. Zhu Ho throws a right hand, but Hui Sung dodges it. He guessed his opponent's intentions and lands a strong blow to Zhu Ho's ribs. Zhu Ho can't move his body and his chest aches. He strengthens the defense, but he receives a strong blow with his knee. And he can't straighten up. It was a strong blow, so Hui Sung waits for Zhu Ho to raise his head. Fighter Li Hui Sun approaches his opponent in the center of the ring as if he was out for a walk. Zhu Ho is stuck in his seat. Hui Sung walks up and Zhu Ho looks at him confused. Fighter Li Hui Sun looks into Zhu Ho's eyes, standing completely open in front of him. Despite participating in a series of attacks, Zhu Ho is unable to even stretch out his arm. Hui Sung says it's time for him to have fun. Zhu Ho tries to block for protection, but Hui Sung unleashes a flurry of blows on him, and Zhu Ho is completely defenseless and cannot even counterattack. It looks like Zhu Ho can't do anything while getting hit all over his body. It's amazing how he's still standing. But Zhu Ho can't give up so easily. He makes a tackle and throws himself at Hui Sung's feet to take him down. Hui Sung swings his legs into first position, and Zhu Ho slips past him, and he sees the opponent's hands, which are ready to squeeze his neck. Commentators are shouting that this is a Muay Thai takeover. Li Hui Sun uses a Muay Thai hold. He successfully captures Zhu Ho and has no way of getting out. And then he does a knee strike, and it looks very powerful. The knee strikes don't stop. Fighter Zhu Ho unsuccessfully tries to shield himself from blows. Coach Zhu Ho yells at him to break out of the series of attacks. Zhu Ho tries to distract his opponent with a punch, but Li Hui Sung cannot be penetrated. He continues to throw knee strikes. Blow after blow, Zhu Ho can't escape. It's getting dangerous. No matter how tough Zhu Ho is, it is too dangerous. A strong knee to the face from Li Hui Sung breaks Zhu Ho's defense. Zhu Ho ends up on the floor and Li Hui Sung seizes the opportunity and continues to beat him up. Coach Park yells for Hui Sung to put pressure on his opponent's neck. Hui Sung hears the coach and follows his advice. He presses on Zhu Ho's neck. Coach Zhu Ho yells at him to grab Hui Sung and throw him to the floor. With incredible effort, Zhu Ho rises up, makes a tackle and tries to knock down the opponent. But Hui Sung slips out of his opponent's hands and grabs his neck in pincers. The commentator yells that it's a front choke. Li Hui Sung escaped the hold and went for a choke. He holds Zhu Ho tightly, and it seems to be a stalemate for Zhu Ho. The referee stops the fight. The match is over. Li Hui's son won by submission. He defeated the impenetrable Zhu Ho. Having started uncertainly, he ended the fight with a submission. In this match, he earned the title of an excellent fighter. Four minutes and 18 seconds. The second time he wins in the first round. The coaches say that their player is an amazing guy. After all, he only recently learned grips. Coach Park remembers his MMA fights, and would like to repeat them. 
He puts Huisung on his shoulders and they go to celebrate their victory. Everyone celebrates the brilliant fight. Huisung gets a call from his mom and asks what is he doing? Enjoying dinner with colleagues? Huisung replies that everyone is crazy and congratulates him. Mom has a strange voice and Huisung asks if she's drunk. Mom replies that she drank to her son's victory. Dad went to the store to buy alcohol and will be back soon. Mom drinks at home, so no need to worry. Mom apologized to her son for not supporting him in his endeavors and continued to say that she did not like it. Mom explains that she was scared and was afraid that her son was getting sick, that she was making him fight over money. She is drunk and reproaches herself for being a bad mother. Wee Sung tells her to calm down. Then dad comes and takes mom's phone. He says that his son can rest and he will take care of his mother. The father tells his son that he performed excellently today. Hui Sung thinks that he needs to work even harder so that his mother won't worry. In the cafe hall, Hui Sung is joyfully greeted by his colleagues. They say that besides wrestling, he needs to take a couple of vocal lessons because he is very bad at karaoke. The 20th of January, office of an elite fight club on the day of the Central League. The coach is yelling at the top of his voice. He grabs Young Huan by the throat and yells that he is hopeless and can only die. They are separated and the coach shouts that he told his ward not to rush. The coach is ushered away and thanks Young Huan for a job well done. Huang sits down on the bench in a bad mood. Hui Sung comes up to him, gives him a drink and tells him not to worry so much. Huang says he didn't live up to expectations. Friends sit on a bench and discuss the match. In his fight, Chung Huan did not lose, but he did not win either. He was careful in the first round, started with a straight punch in the second, and won the audience award. Tae Yong yelled at him to go slow and put pressure on his opponent. But Juan was too worried, ignored Tae Yong's advice and attacked his opponent's defense like a clockwork one. Once he started losing stamina, he opened his chin. It was a bad habit of his. And in the end, something happened that shouldn't have happened. Both fighters hit him in the face at the same time. And both fell unconscious right in the ring. But since Huang didn't win soon, he won't be able to debut as a professional. Hui Sung thought his friend was fit to be a fighter, but he gets stage fright, and his body freezes as soon as the match starts. Hui Sung told his friend that he will definitely win next time. Huang turned to his friend and said that he wanted to talk to him about an important matter. But at this time they were called. Huan immediately got ready to go, and Hui Sung asked what his friend wanted to tell him. But he turned around and replied that it was nothing important. Hui Sung followed him, and his back seemed so small that day. Coach Park said that they had good news for their gym. Yang Kun signed a contract with SFC. Everyone was very happy that now they would have an SFC fighter in the gym. They wanted to get an autograph. Hui Sung told Yu Jin who was standing nearby that the world is so strange. Yesterday, Huang lost the opportunity to debut, and today, Young Kun received an offer from SFC. The guy didn't know whether to be happy or sad. Yu Jin said that actually, Jung Huan happily hangs on Young Kun's arm and is not upset. Coach Park said that there will be a match in mid-June. He will be the coach and he needs one more person. Everyone's eyes lit up. All the fighters wanted to go with Coach Park. One shouted that he had been working here for a long time. The other is that he is never late. The coach said that everyone has an opportunity, except those who made their debut as professionals and are preparing for the match. The coach said he couldn't choose who would go with him, so he suggested they play Amitakuji. The first person comes up and chooses a number. The coach will change everything several times so that the number and line are impossible to guess. The coach drew the board. He said that no matter who is chosen, there should be no objections. Hui Sung was called first. He drew along the line to the very edge, on which there was an inscription, selected. Hui Sung was very happy. He asked the others for forgiveness and said that he did not think he would be so lucky. Coach Park congratulated him, but he asked if Hui Sung is qualified. Personal trainer certificate or sports trainer certificate. Hui Sung had no qualifications, and the coach explained that if he wanted to be the second coach in the SFC, he needed to have a license, and to get it, he needed a sports-related qualification, which is provided by the government. If there are no such qualifications, then Hui Sung cannot go with Coach Park. The coach suggested playing again, but then Hui Sung shouted that he was not going to give up and would qualify before the match. Coach Park wonders how Hui Sung is going to qualify for the match in June. Hui Sung says that the test for a second-level sports coach will be in Gachala of May. He will do everything in time. Young Kun counters that no one cares whether the guy gets qualified and they can't depend on it. Young Kun proposes this solution. If Hui Sung gets qualified, he will go with them to the matches, and if he doesn't qualify, then he will treat the whole team for 300,000 won. Hui Sung agrees, and the Pranis shake hands. The whole team is confident that a good treat awaits them, and they began to create a menu. A few days later, Sang Guk walks into the training room. Sang Guk saw Hui Sung sitting in the break room with his textbooks and asked what he was doing there. 
Coach Park revealed that Hui Sung is preparing for the test. Sung Gook asked what the tests were because he had been working outside the gym lately and didn't know what was going on there. Coach Park revealed that Hui Sung got the position of Coach Young Gook, but he is not qualified. Sung Gook says that Hui Sung has received an invitation to the ranking competition that will be held in May. But this match is in the lightweight category. The coach is very surprised by this and asks why. Sung Gook says that Hui Sung's physique is more suited to lightweight and that his opponents have outweighted him before. From now on, his opponents will be stronger, so he must move to his weight category. Sung Gook says that Hui Sung has little experience in losing weight, and if he adds to the stress of preparing for the qualifications, he may not be able to cope. They decide to ask Hui Sung, and he confidently says that he can handle everything. Sung Gook explains to the guy that he will need to lose 10 kilograms of weight. It is difficult, and if you add training and passing qualifications to this, it will be very difficult for him. Hui Sung suggests they try and see how it goes. He asks Sang Gook to give him a chance, and if he feels that he is not coping, he will immediately let the coach know. Sang Gook thinks about it, but he already knows how stubborn Hui Sung is and agrees. Hui Sung's joy knows no bounds, and he promises that he will not let you down. Sang Gook sets one condition. Training, studying, diet, everything can overlap each other. Hui Sung shouldn't sacrifice sleep for studying. Hui Sung agrees. Sang Gook says that this time he will train Hui Sung before the fight. This time the enemy is different from all previous ones, and you need to know how to fight him. This is a special fight, whether Hui Sung wins or loses, and how he plays will affect his entire career. Hui Sung says he's willing to bet his life on winning. He gives Hui Sung a dossier on his rival. Hui Sung reads the name. Mitsushima and Sanguk confirms that his opponent is Japanese. A man comes into the store and asks Mitsushima if everything is okay. Mitsushima Yasuke from Team Momotaro greets the newcomer. The store owner asks Mitsushima how things are going. And the guy says that one customer forgot to take 80 yen in change. What to do with them? The owner replies that Mitsushimo should take them for himself. Mitsushimo thinks that the buyer might come back and cause a scandal, or maybe he won't have enough money for the subway. He's clearly afraid. The owner is surprised how you can be such a coward if you are a man, and he suggests that this is why Mitsushima doesn't get along with people. The owner says that the guy's shift is over and he can go home. Mitsushima walks down the street. There are a lot of people and he runs into people and he politely apologizes all the time. He enters Momotaro's training room. The gym is full. All the fighters are training. Everyone tries to stay away from Mitsushima. He enters the locker room. He takes off his unfashionable glasses, and he comes out into the hall as a completely different person. He warms up his muscles before training, and he approaches the punching bag. The rest of the athletes are watching him. Mitsushima begins to practice punches. They are powerful and accurate. The fighters say among themselves that his blows can drive you crazy. They even sound different. At this moment, Mitsushima is completely happy. His coach shouts that he told Mitsushima to come into the office right away. And Mitsushima instead ran to hit the bag again. The coach says that they received an offer from X1, and the match will be in May. Mitsushima looks at the photo of his opponent, Li Hui Sun. His face lights up with a smile. He is happy. In the middle of the training room, Hui Sung sits on the floor and says that he doesn't understand anything about the test questions. Yu Jin comes up and asks why he's not in the break room studying. Does he want everyone to see how cool he is? Hui Sung says he couldn't concentrate. He asks the girl to help him understand the issue. The two of them begin to explore complex topics. Hui Sung thinks that Yu Jin is very cute. It's not for nothing that she is called the MMA goddess. She has big beautiful eyes, clean velvety skin and it smells good. Yu Jin asks why Hui Sung was staring at her like that. He replies that she smells delicious. The girl is embarrassed and says that she just got out of the shower. She asks what else Hui Sung doesn't understand. He says he understands everything and thanks her for her help. The girl is about to leave and goes to the door. Hui Sung calls out to her and asks her to go along. Yu Jin turns around and looks at the guy. He decides that she will refuse now and pretends that he forgot that he promised to help the coach. Yu Jin asks how long he will help the coach. Hui Sung says he doesn't know and the girl leaves on her own. Hui Sung stands in disbelief and does not understand what just happened. Just then his phone rings and the sound makes him jump in surprise. His boss sent a video of Mitsushima's fight. Hui Sung starts to look and what he sees amazes him. He thinks what's wrong with that idiot in the video. Hui Sung watches Yu Jin in the training room and sighs. He wonders if the girl noticed that he was trying to hit on her. She seemed distant lately. Yu Jin asks what is he staring at. Sang Gook comes up and asks what Hui Sung is thinking about. He asks what Hui Sung's opinion was after watching the video of Mitsushima's fight. Hui Sung says his opponent is completely crazy. Mitsushima is an excellent boxer. He has outstanding speed and striking power. Furious finishing blows stun opponents and bring him closer to victory. However, 
he has a personal problem. Even after the match ends, he continues to attack his opponent, loses control of himself and tries to continue the fight, despite the referee stopping him. At such moments, the expression on his face resembles that of a madman. But during the weigh-in, he can't even look his opponent in the eye and look shy. That's why everyone thinks he has a split personality. In comparison, Choi Haiseob seems like just a naughty child. Sangguk reads that Mitsushima Esuke has a 10-win streak and one loss. His history in X1 is significant with a series of six victories, all completed by knockouts, which means that he is a fairly successful fighter. He is fast, does not miss his opponent's mistakes, and has a well-developed strike and defense against tackles. Given Hui Sung's strengths, he needs to box in this match, but Mitsushima is much better at boxing. Also, their styles are very similar. Sangguk asks if Hui Sung saw the match between Choi Do Hee and John Sicily. Hui Sung replies that he did, and Choi Do Hee won by TKO. Although he is weaker and slower than John Sicily. Despite this, his strikes were preemptive, and even if they hit each other at the same time, Sicily's strikes were not as strong. Sangguk asks Hui Sung why he thinks. Hui Sung doesn't know how to explain this. Sangguk says it all depended on the timing and accuracy of the strikes. Choi Do Hee hit a little faster almost all the time. This was reflected in Choi's hitting on Sicily, although technically Sicily should have hit faster. Even though both were punching at the same time, reducing the time between turning and attacking by a split second, he was able to dominate Sicily's rhythm, which subsequently forced Sicily to rethink his punches and slow down. The same applies to his hitting accuracy. He didn't just hit, but used speed and accuracy to hit only certain spots. If someone can achieve this, then the strength of his opponent will not play a significant role. Sangguk said that Hui Sung will practice these two things during training. Sangguk said that it would be difficult to do it in two months, but Hui Sung should be able to do it. He is a gifted guy and he needs to learn to use his talent. And they started training. First, Sangguk told Hui Sung to pump himself up, and Yan Tai Yong was involved in the matter, who squeezed all the juice out of his student. Hui Sung wished that his coach would die quickly. Hui Sung also went through a series of exercises according to the Barbara program. 15 weight lifts plus 10 kilograms. 30 push-ups with a weight plus 10 kilograms, 40 times abs plus 10 kilograms, 50 times rack plus 10 kilograms, 70 times exercises with resistance and ropes. And all this was considered one approach that needed to be completed as quickly as possible. There was a two-minute break between BVL approaches. There were five approaches in total. Despite the fact that there was a break between approaches, Hui Sung slowed down more and more. Starting from the third approach, the break was three minutes. Hui Sung was out of breath and the coach told him not to open his mouth, but to breathe through his nose. Hui Sung said that his hands were already shaking, and asked how long such training would last. Yan Tai Yang said that the coach ordered them to be held three times a week, and Hui Sung was crazy about this arrangement. He said he had read about overwork, and that it causes muscle loss. Tae Yang reassured the student that he was keeping an eye on this. Sang Guk came by to see how the training was going, and asked Tae Yang if he had gotten the most out of Hui Sung. Tae Yong replied that he had done everything he could. Sung Guk said that everything is great, and now it's time for technique training. First, there was a training session with the ball, and Sang Guk asked Yong Huan to demonstrate how it was done. Chung Huan willingly showed the technique. He deftly dodged the ball flying straight into his face. Sung Guk said that this training came from boxing to practice the timing of punches and their accuracy. If Hui Sun can use this bag like Jung Huan, he will improve his upper body tempo. Hui Sung started training. It was hard for him. The pair kept swaying at a strange angle. Sangguk said that it's because Hui Sung sees the fixed target, and he doesn't have the right balance so he can't hit the target. We need to continue these trainings. The next stage is tap ball. An ideal exercise for improving the accuracy of strikes, the dynamics of visual sharpness and return strikes. Jung Huan again showed how to do it. The ball was small and it flew terribly. Sangguk told Hui Sung to try now. Hui Sung put the ball on his forehead and started hitting it. He liked this. He shouted that it was cool, and that he trusted the ball as a coach. Sangguk thought that his ward was an idiot. Sangguk loudly shouted one word, Forehead! Hui Sung hit the ball hard. The ball flew straight into his face, but Hui Sung managed to dodge, and the ball hit Tae Yong right in the face, who had just gone to watch the training. Tae Yong asked if he had offended Hui Sung in some way, and he chased after Hui Sung, who decided to flee. Sangguk analyzed that the ball not only accelerated but also deviated along a curve. But Hui Sung saw that the ball was flying towards his face and quickly changed its trajectory. Now Sangguk's guesses have been confirmed. He understands what Hui Sung is capable of and he just needs to reveal it. While he was thinking, Young Huan also joined the fight. 
After training, Hui Sung returns home. Suddenly he sees his mother in front of him. He caught up with her and asked what she was doing on the street so late. Mom was embarrassed and replied that she was meeting with friends. Hui Sung said that mom smelled like fried meat. She had a delicious dinner. Mom mumbled something incomprehensible. They walked home together along the way, discussing Hui Sung's plans. Mom was against him preparing for the match and qualification at the same time, but she understood that her son would still do as he wanted. May came and it was time for the second test. Hui Sung tried to write it as best as possible. Ta Yong asked Hui Sung how the tests went, and he replied that it was unknown when the results would come. Ta Yong said that now we need to focus on training, and Hui Sung went to warm up his muscles. He worked with the ball in training. Both of his coaches watched him practice and discussed how Hui Sung was doing better. Sung Guk noted that Hui Sung is in a difficult situation right now, which is why he is lethargic. There are two difficult stages when losing weight. The first is dehydration, which occurs a week before the weigh-in. As the water drains, all physical abilities also disappear, including muscle strength. The state before dehydration begins and resumes afterwards so that a person is fully prepared for battle. Therefore, two weeks before dehydration, you need to focus on strengthening muscles and endurance. Now Hui Sung is in this stage. At this stage, athletes should not consume creatine because it helps retain water in the body. Athletes diet and train hard, so this is the worst time of their lives. However, Hui Sung tried very hard. Sung Guk has already asked Park Sung Hoon for advice and is now asking Tae Yong to help Hui Sung avoid a nervous breakdown. Although sometimes he thought that Tae Yong could be the source of a nervous breakdown for Hui Sung when he gives him excessive loads. There are five days left before the match, and Hui Sung is very tired. Yu Jin approached him and asked what he was doing here. Hui Sung rudely told her to leave. Then he remembered how Yu Jin, who was preparing for the match, was rude to him, and realized that now they had switched places. The girl gave him nuts and chocolate, distorted that they would help him satisfy his hunger for a while. Hui Sung realized that the girl had specially prepared this for him. He thanked her for her concern. Yu Jin was about to leave, and Hui Sung invited her to lunch after the match. Hui Sung thought that the girl was very cute when she was angry, but it was hard for him to even laugh, and he got ready to go home. At this time his phone rang. It was his father calling. He told his son that he was in intensive care at the hospital. Hui Sung ran into the hospital ward. At the reception desk, he asked where patient Lee Kang Wu was. At this time, his dad called out to him, who was sitting on the bed with his head bandaged. Hui Sung began to ask why his father had a head injury and why he was wearing such strange clothes because he wears a shirt and tie to work. Father and son came out to talk. The father said that in his company, where he worked, a situation occurred that did not allow his father to stay there and he quit. The father could not remain without work because the family had outstanding loans and he went to work in construction. The father said that his son did not need to worry so much. In a few years, everything would stabilize. Hui Sung remembered how he met his mother at a late hour and asked if mom really worked too. Her father said she went to work in a restaurant. Hui Sung said that he knew that his parents always paid for all the coaches he had when he played sports. Although the grandmother was against it, the parents wanted their son to do what he loved and therefore became mired in debt. He felt guilty towards his parents and wanted them to be able to rely on him. The father sternly told his son that he and his mother did not support him in order to listen to whining. They themselves decided to support their son. Moreover, at first he was a schoolboy and could not make decisions himself. The father told his son that life cannot be filled with roses and all people face problems. All problems end sooner or later. Everyone in the family is healthy and they have such a wonderful son. The father advised his son to live with pride in his family. Hui Sung burst into tears at his father's words. He asked why his father was so bandaged and if his head was okay. The father said that his son finally figured out to ask and suggested calling his mother, who is now very worried. He said that he would soon go on a business trip to the village and it's time for the son to go because dad is alive and the son has an important match. Hui Sung understood that he could not help his father. He asked where his mother worked, but his father said that she would be uncomfortable if her son saw her. Hui Sung said that he would look from afar without showing his mother's eyes. Mom worked as a dishwasher in a restaurant. Hui Sung watched her from the window. He thought that his mother tried so hard at work, but at home she did not show her fatigue. He promised himself that he would definitely win the upcoming match in order to earn a lot of money and help his parents. He was very active during boxing training, quickly dodged blows, and he attacked his sparring partner so hard that he told him to fight easier. The coaches could not understand what had changed so much in their students' behavior. Sung Guk saw that Hui Sung not only became mentally stronger, but began to move and dodge with minimal effort. He reads Tai Jun's timings and moves constantly. Sung Guk saw that Hui Sung was developing, and he liked it. 
The day of the weigh-in arrived. Li Hui Sun passed with a result of 70 kilograms, 490 grams. Mitsushima Yatsuke passed with a weight of 70 kilograms and 100 grams. Stradown is next according to plan. Hui Sung looks at his opponent and thinks that he is small, but he has great muscle mass. He didn't have to lose weight and he looks impressive. Mitsushima does not look his opponent in the eye. He looks at the floor and repeats one word all the time. No, no, no. Hui Sung tells Mitsushima that treating an opponent like a toy is not cool and calls him a crazy idiot. The battle of views ends and the coaches separate the athletes. Coach Park asks why Hui Sung provoked his opponent. He answers, then Mitsushima started first. He kept repeating no, and it gave Hui Sung goosebumps. The coach confirms that this fighter is very strange. Hui Sung is still confident that he will win this fight. On the day of the match, Hui Sung continues to train. The coach praises him for his good shots and lets him rest. Sangguk approaches Hui Sung and asks why he is so quiet. Hui Sung replies that Sangguk said that this match will show what he is capable of. So they wondered what his value was as an athlete. Sangkuk asks what conclusion did Hui Sung come to. The guy replies that Sangkuk will see the answer to this question after the match. The hall worker says that the previous match is over. Hui Sung should be backstage in 10 minutes. The 73rd main card in the second match will begin any minute. In the blue corner of the ring is Li Hui Sun. He is very relaxed and shows his love for the audience. He's definitely confident in his abilities. He has reason to be confident. He has already shown what he is capable of in the previous two matches. The commentator continues that this time Hui Sung will have a tough opponent. He has seven victories in the lightweight category. In the red corner of the ring, living weapon fighter Mitsushima Yatsuki. He's wearing a honey mask. He calmly enters the ring. He always plays a fierce game in the ring. Sangguk says the match lasts 15 minutes. Hui Sung shouldn't engage until he's sure he has the advantage. And the more skirmishes, the calmer he should be. Mitsushima's coach tells him that if he crosses the forbidden line in this fight, he will not have any more offers. The fighters are invited to the center of the ring. The commentator says that there is a big difference in the physique of the athletes, and it is surprising that they are in the same weight category. Hui Sung is six centimeters taller than Mitsushima. It won't be easy for Mitsushima, but he has always beaten opponents who were bigger than him. Mitsushima has a lot more experience, and it will be a competition of physical strength versus experience. Blue fighter is ready. The red fighter is ready. The fight begins, and Mitsushima's face changes. The fighters study each other's movements. I wonder who will be the first to fight. Mitsushima attacks with his first right hand, and immediately makes a combination. Adds a left kick. Hui Sun dodges. Mitsushima throws a low right hand. He aims for his opponent's chin. Hui Sun leans back. The blow misses the target. Amazingly, Li Hui Sun skillfully uses upper body movements to evade attacks. Seeing an opportunity, Li Hui Sun counters with a low kick. He immediately kicks the opponent's shin. Mitsushima took advantage of the time, took a breath and rushed into battle. He sends a direct punch to Li Hui Sung's head. Li Hui Sun barely dodges and moves away. It's incredible. Both fighters demonstrate excellent defense and offense from the very beginning. Mitsushima attacks with lightning speed. What amazing speed. He used a straight punch to close the distance in a short period of time. You can feel his desire to continue attacking until he breaks through the enemy's defense. And these attacks go on and on. Many opponents have fallen under this wave of aggressive blows, but Li Hui Sun is not far behind and responds to his blows with dignity. Eventually, Mitsushima's punch breaks through the defense. What amazing power. Due to a powerful blow, Li Hui Sun flies into the ring net. Mitsushima seizes the opportunity and continues a series of attacks to destroy Li Hui Sun's defense. Li Hui Sun pushes Mitsushima away and ducks to the side, but Mitsushima immediately closes the distance. Mitsushima thinks it's a lot of fun, and there's nothing better than beating people to a pulp. Another series of terrible attacks from Mitsushima. This is getting dangerous. Mitsushima's coach sees that his ward is wound up again, although he told him to remain calm. Mitsushima doesn't stop. What a brutal series of blows. Yes, he is at the peak of his skills today. Coach PK says that this is already dangerous, but Sanguk says that Hui Sung doesn't just allow himself to be beaten. We need to take a closer look. The metronome counts down the seconds in Hui Sung's head. Mitsushima continues to attack and break through the enemy's defense. He swings again and again. Hui Sung remains calm. The metronome in Hui Sung's head freezes. At this moment, Hui Sung straightens out like a compressed spring and punches Mitsushima in the jaw with his left hand. Mitsushima does not expect this and misses the blow. Immediately, Hui Sung carries out a combination and delivers a crushing right blow to his opponent's head. Hui Sung's coaches froze in delight at their student's success. It was incredible one. What happened now? Li Hui Sun landed a control jab and followed it up with another punch. 
Viewers witnessed mind-blowing fighting instincts and a perfect sense of timing. Sungook understands that since the opponent throws punches so thoughtlessly, the fighter automatically has more chances to predict his attacks. But he didn't think that Hui Sung would learn this so quickly. Lee Hui Sun requests viewers' support. No one has ever seen a more relaxed fighter in the middle of a match. He looks at Mitsushima, who is sitting in the ring, and tells him, No, no. The referee will ask the fighters to get up and take their positions. They look at each other again, but now the atmosphere is completely different. Mitsushima can't pull himself together. Lee Hui Sun makes the first move. He maintains his distance and attacks his opponent with a series of jabs. Mitsushima tries to break the distance and retreats, but Hui Sung catches up with him and strikes him again. Mitsushima tries to counterattack, but misses a double hook. Fall again. This is Mitsushima's second fall today. He is trying to get up, and he misses a knee strike right in a shaky position. The blow sends him flying towards the ring net. He doesn't like all this very much and is very angry. Immediately after the first, a second knee strike flies towards Mitsushima. Li Hui Sun doesn't give his opponent a chance to respond. Mitsushima's defenses are weakening. At the same time, a high kick combo lands right at him. He is a little late in defending and takes damage from the blow. Having barely blocked the blow, Mitsushima ducks to the side. Li Hui Sun spreads his arms, provoking his opponent. It's as if he's saying, hit me if you dare. Mitsushima sees an opponent opening up in front of him. Li Hui Sun throws an unexpected straight punch, but Mitsushima manages to dodge it. Mitsushima tries a jumping hook. Hui Sung dodges the blow by leaning back. Mitsushima predicted that the enemy would do exactly this, and delivers the next right blow to the head. But Hui Sung dodges this blow as well. How amazingly fast Li Hui Sung moves. He was able to dodge Mitsushima's surprise attack. Hui Sung openly laughs at his opponent. An enraged Mitsushima attacks again. He closes the distance with lightning speed and hits with his left hand. But Hui Sung dodges the enemy's furious attack again. Mitsushima is confused and thinks why all his attacks don't go through. Commentators say that Li Hui Sun dodges attacks like he's dancing. Next he throws a middle kick at the speed of the wind. Two finishing middle kicks. Mitsushima strengthens his defense. No, it wasn't a middle kick. Commentators are wondering, what kind of kicking technique was that? Is this some kind of percussion dance? Hui Sung's coaches say that now the guy is just having fun and doesn't let his opponent breathe. Mitsushima screams in rage and powerlessness that his opponent is a bastard. Mitsushima's coach yells at him not to be fooled by Hui Sung's provocations. Mitsushima lands a nasty right hand. He fell for Li Hui Sung's provocation. Another instant counter flies straight at the enemy. Mitsushima falls for the third time. Li Hui Sung seizes the opportunity. Mitsushima is in great danger. Li Hui Sung's killer elbow breaks through his opponent's defense. Mitsushima is bleeding. Hui Sung thinks Mitsushima needs to find out how the people he beat felt. The referee intervened in the battle between the two fighters. He stops the fight. Li Hui Sun wins all matches in one round. The commentator doesn't know how to describe him. The athlete, who has not been involved in professional fights for even a year, has shaken the lightweight division of fighters in X1. It's time for all lightweight fighters to take a closer look at him. The entire audience shouts Li Hui Sung's name. Li Hui Sung won the first round in 3 minutes and 38 seconds by technical knockout. The next day, everyone was writing about Hui Sung's magnificent victory. The community also appreciated the fight, Hui Sung's mentality, and his love for fame. Sangook sees the coach park has changed a lot too. He laughs more and more often and it's nice to see it. At this time, Hui Seung receives a message that he has passed the tests. He already called his mother and said that he would go abroad as a second coach. But he did not know that there were difficulties. He did not take into account that only the written exam results came in. He needs to pass a practical exam, an oral exam, and successfully conduct training to receive a certificate and the minimum time for this is 10 days. The coaches understand that Hui Sung will not be able to go. Hui Sung is barely alive and can hardly move, but he dreams of America, Germany, and matches. He is very angry at everyone for believing that four months would be enough for him to qualify. The coach says that he has already apologized to him and asks him to come to Eugene. She became very ill, even lost her voice and lives alone, with no one to take care of her. Hui Sung wonders if there is anyone else to go but him. The trainer says that the other fighters are too rough and will eat her up. He gives Hui Sung his card to buy food and medicine for the girl. Hui Sung can buy something for himself, just let him bring the receipt later. Hui Sung approaches the house where Yu Jin lives on the 23rd floor. He tells the guard that he came to visit his sick girlfriend. He rings the doorbell and Yu Jin answers. Hui Sung says she looks so bad that he will have nightmares about her. The girl is very angry with the newcomer and slams the door in his face. Hui Sung knocks again and shouts that he didn't go to the other side of town to stand in front of a closed door. She asks where the guy got her address and he says his coach gave it to him, and he thought that the coach would warn Yu Jin. 
Finally, the door opened and the girl invited Hui Sung to come in. She wants to go back to bed, but Hui Sung says he brought food and she needs to eat. Finally, they sit at the table and eat. Hui Sung says he wanted to take her out for lunch, but he didn't think they'd be having lunch at her house. He asks when she got sick. Yu Jin says three days ago. Hui Sung says that if she hasn't showered for three days, it's no wonder her head is so dirty. The girl gets very angry. Then she laughs and thinks that this idiot makes her even sicker. But she feels better because someone visited her. But it would be better if someone else came instead of Hui Sung. She says that she saw Hui Sung's match while she was sick. She was surprised. This was a new level of combat. Hui Sung says it makes him happy to hear Yujin's compliments. But she says it's not a compliment. And she has to confess. Which Hui Sung hated. For the guy, this confession comes as a surprise. He says it was strange not to notice. But why is she talking about it now? She says that at first... She thought that he was hired only for special abilities that others did not have, and he did only what he wanted. She thought he was a self-centered piece of shit, but it turned out that this was not the case. The girl saw that Hui Sung had skills, hard work and confidence, not vulgarity. Now she asks for forgiveness for having such an opinion about him. Hui Sung tells her to forget about it so as not to ruin their relationship. The girl says she didn't say that to make Hui Sung feel better, but so she wouldn't feel so bad. Suddenly the girl becomes worse, and Hui Sung realizes that she has a high temperature. Because MMA athletes go through rigorous training and dieting, they have low immunity and are more likely to get sick. In 10 months, Yu Jin participated in two matches and performed at fan meetings. It is not surprising that due to severe overwork, she fell ill. Hui Sung puts the girl to bed and gives her pills to take. Yu Jin takes the pills and immediately falls asleep. Hui Sung decides to clean her apartment and then go home. The girl barely audibly thanks him in her sleep and says that she doesn't hate him anymore, although he's still a jerk. After a while, the kitchen in Yujin's apartment is sparkling. Next, Hui Sung notices another room and wants to clean it. He opens the door and sees things piled on the floor. He decides not to figure out what is clean and what is not, and wash everything at once. Hui Sung arrives at the training room and is told that the coach was looking for him. The director of the MMA organization, X1 Han Gun Ho, is sitting in the coaching room. He says he came to discuss Hui Sung's contract. He says they were contacted by the SFC. They want Hui Sung to be reassigned there. Hui Sung asks why they contacted Director Han and not him personally. The director says they probably wanted his approval before sending the proposal to Hui Sung. After all, X1 transferred many fighters to the SFC. The director said that he hopes that Hui Sung will refuse. It's still too early for him. It's difficult for even champions to survive in the SFC, and it will also be difficult to gain attention. The guy is popular here. He needs to consolidate his success before leaving, because he's only 23 years old. Honestly, he won't interfere if Hui Sung agrees. But he hopes he won't because the guy is doing good business for their company. The director says that they will create conditions for Hui Sung on equal terms with the SFC, and if he takes into account all the input factors, he will understand that X1 is a more profitable option for him. The conditions are as follows. A permanent salary of 8 million won and a bonus of 100% for winnings. They discuss this issue with Sang-gook, but Hui Sung needs to decide. Hui Sung says that he trusts his boss Sang-gook with everything. Sang-gook asks director Han about reputation and symbolism that SFC puts before money. Can they discuss it? The director asks him to explain what Sang-gook means by reputation. SFC is the world's largest arena. Any fighter who is as good as Hui Sung will want to fight in the SFC. Director Khan says that this is all in the past. They exhaust their fighters to the point of exhaustion. What reputations and symbolism are we talking about? He asks Sang-gook to tell him the conditions. Sang-gook is asking for a starting salary of 10 million won, and the same for winning. Hui Sung thinks he heard that the 20 million won salary is only given to national-level champions. Director Han says he will pay 12 million won, and the same amount for winning. The guys can't believe their ears. Director Han continues to say that he will connect them with one of the sponsors, which will bring in an additional amount of 30 million won every year for Hui Sung personally. Of course, this amount will be available if Hui Sung wins the match. Hui Sung asks what will happen if he loses. Then there will only be the 20 million that the director proposed. In any case, they win. The guys don't understand the reason for such generosity, and director Han says that he can't say everything right now. But he is preparing for something and hopes that Hui Sung will be part of this project. Sang Guk says that they agree, and that makes director Han very happy. The director leaves promising to send the contract and tells Hui Sung that his boss Sang Guk is a very good person and Hui Sung should listen to him. Sang Guk seems worried about the new proposals. Hui Sung asks why. Sang Guk explains that director Han is not the kind of person to make a losing deal. Sang Guk says that he won't cheat, 
but Sanguk doesn't know how Huisung will be used. Huisung says that he completely trusts Sanguk, thanks to whom he got so far. Sanguk replies that you shouldn't trust all people like that. Someone might betray the guy. But Huisung is willing to take risks for money and fame. In any case, Sanguk advises not to tell anyone about this proposal until all the official papers are signed. Huisung walks down the street, and his heart jumps out of his chest with joy and excitement. He dreams of 12 million and a prize from a sponsor, and thinks that no fighter has ever received such conditions. But the best news is that the SFC paid attention to him. He decides that if he changes his mind about working with Director Han, he will become the second fighter in the SFC after Young Kun. He hopes that if he continues in the same vein, he will be able to very quickly help his parents pay off their debts. His phone rings and Kim Sun sees that it is Yu Jin calling. She immediately shouts why Hui Sung came into the room. Her voice sounds loud, which means she's feeling better. But she is very angry. Hui Sung says he cleaned it up and washed the clothes. The girl screams into the phone that he is a crazy bastard. Hui Sung tries to explain that if he didn't wash the clothes, the girl wouldn't have anything to wear. And she screams that she shouldn't have touched anything. Hui Sung doesn't understand at all how to communicate with Yu Jin. Jun has arrived. Hui Sung is invited to watch the match and he accepts food delivery. There is a lot of food. Pizza, chicken, enough for everyone. All the fighters gathered to watch the match, which they care about more than their own. SFC represents today's fighters. In the blue corner of the ring is the Invincible Bob, the champion of the middle weight category with a score of 12 fights and 12 victories, Jicardo da Silva. In the red corner of the ring is a fighter who has defeated many athletes, Kan Yong Kun. The referee announces the start of the fight. The fighters are ready for battle and assess each other's movements. They exchange blows. From the very beginning, Kang Young Kun tries to take Silva down. The guys in Korea react joyfully to such activity of their comrade. But as soon as the second round began, Kang Young Kun began to lose ground. Had he used all his stamina in the first round? The fans were despondent seeing this turn of events. The third round begins. It is clear that both athletes are tired. Silva tries to make a pass to the legs. Will Kang Young Kun fall? Kang Young Kun was able to successfully transition into the front throttle before Silva made the grab. The match is over. This is Kang Young Kun's first victory in the SFC. The joy of the guys who were so worried about their comrade knows no bounds. Hui Sung thinks about the match and understands that both athletes are champions in their organizations. There are only champions there, gaining titles. This means that there are a lot of monsters there that are stronger than them. After watching the match, Hui Sung is confident that the decision to sign with X1 was the right one. He is still too inexperienced to stand on such a stage. While everyone is celebrating, the phone rings in the trainer's room and Hui Sung answers. It's Chief Sung Du Sik calling and asking how the match went. Hui Sung tells him. In addition, Chief Song says that he is offering Hui Sung participation in the main match in September. At the cafe, Young Kun tells his friends about the match. Coach Park asks Hui Sung about the offer he received. Hui Sung says that he is worried about the offer. The choice fell on two opponents, but Pereira was recommended. Coach Park understands that Hui Sung will have to fight the Nomar alone. The other candidate is number three, Kim Ja Hyun. That is a very serious opponent. Coach Park says Pereiro has a nasty personality. The sidekick, the barn, and the jumping elbow strike are all techniques that help incapacitate opponents. If you're lucky, you can get away with rehabilitation, but none of his opponents ever entered the octagon again. He gained notoriety due to doping. Injections, steroids, diuretics. He was caught doing everything. A scoundrel who is ready to do anything to win. Because of this, he was temporarily expelled from two organizations, and other organizations refused to cooperate with him. For this reason, he signed a contract with X1, the fifth organization to offer him a contract. If the fight gets out of control, Hui Sung will never return to the ring. Next up is Kim Ja Hyun. He's nothing to worry about, but he's just as well trained as Pereiro. He's so strong that he's been nicknamed the guardian of his weight class. He has a lean, athletic body and is a merciless monster for beginners. Hui Sung thinks it's better to choose Kim Ja Hyun, but Coach Park says it's not that simple. The match will be the main event. Kim Ja Hyun has won 80% of his matches due to a referee's decision. Usually the judges' decisions are made after the third round, but in the case of main matches there may be five rounds. Kim Ja Hyun has a huge amount of stamina, so the length of the rounds will not affect his productivity. For this reason, Hui Song, who can withstand two rounds, will easily give up. Hui Song needs to win in two rounds, but no one could knock out Kim Ja Hyun, or force him to submit through submission in his entire sports career. If we talk about fighting styles, Pereiro is more suitable. Hui Song didn't know what to do, and the coach advised him to first watch videos of his opponent's fights. At night, Hui Song thought about the fact that he watched the fights for two hours 
and still couldn't decide which opponent to choose. At this time, he receives a message on his phone. Sang Guk asks if Hui Sung is awake and asks him to pick up the phone. He will call now for an important conversation. Hui Sung can't figure out what happened. Sang Guk says that he heard that Hui Sung is choosing his opponent. He tells Hui Sung to choose who he wants to fight, and Sang Guk promises that he will train the guy for the upcoming fight. Hui Sung is upset that he spent so much time choosing, because in fact he wants to fight, and with whom is still a secret. Children play football on the playground, and the ball rolls to a person's feet. The kid goes to pick up the ball. A man is sitting on a bench. The boy looks at him. The boy shouts joyfully, Dad, son, the man rejoices in response. The boy tells his dad that he has become much better at playing football. He is trying very hard. The father tells his son to go play, and he will wait for him on the bench and watch him. The children tell the boy that his dad is very scary, but the boy objects to them. A man comes up to his father and says that his son has grown a lot. He says Pereiro needs to keep his phone on all the time. Pereiro says they haven't seen Costa for a long time. Pereiro says he sees his son once a month and would like to talk about business later. But Costa replies that he received an offer from X1. He says the match will be in September in Korea. Pereiro liked his opponent, and therefore there was a chance to accept the offer. But Pereiro says they're likely looking to replace someone who left at the last minute. Pereiro refuses, and says that he won nine times in X1, but only those who lost to him receive offers for matches. Now he doesn't want to agree to the match. Costa says he asked Pereiro not to do things that cross the line. Because of them, organizations disliked him. Pereiro has no money, and Costa tells him that if he stops doping and starts respecting his opponents, he will get more offers. Pereiro replies that whoever doesn't like it, let him fight himself. Costa says that if Pereiro accepts the offer, he will get a whole column in the article. Pereiro says this is a completely different matter. He calls his son. He tells Juan that he will soon become a champion and invites him to the cafe. Juan is very happy that his dad will become the strongest. Hui Sung's face is filled with misery as he slams his hand on the floor and gives up. The coach says not to give up so quickly until he teaches Hui Sung the correct technique. The coach doesn't know what to do with this little rat. Then he offers a fight, and if Hui Sung can defeat him at least once, he undertakes to feed him lunch for a whole month. Hui Sung really likes it. He agrees to fight there and then, and takes a fighting stance. The coach makes a tackle to Hui Sung's knees. He begins to carry out the takeover. This is a deception. The upper body attack is real. Hui Sung also tries to make a grab. He grabs the coach and tries to throw him to the floor. The coach thinks Hui Sung has an incredible transition to the ground. Hui Sung thinks that if he just puts his left hand under the coach's arm and pulls his wrist, he will be able to overcome him. The coach sees Hui Sung's mistake. He did not check whether he had properly fixed the opponent's legs. He rolls over and grabs Hui Sung's hand. He changed his grip position in a second, and now Hui Sung needs to get out before the coach pulls his arm. But he doesn't have time to do this. He is securely fixed by the coach. Hui Sung admits that his coach is very good and is sorry to let him go. But the coach believes that it will be useful for Hui Sung to feel all the pain of this technique. Hui Sung completely disagrees with him. After training, Hui Sung can't get up from the floor. Coach Park praises him for his good job. His trainer is Lee Su Hook, Franklin of the Brown family karate. Coach Park says that Hui Sung almost beat him. Most people can't even knock him down, but Hui Sung did it without being attacked. Maybe it has to do with past training in Korean wrestling. Very few people master Suriam. This sport is so problematic to learn. You could say this is Hui Sung's unique skill set. Coach Park says they were contacted by X1. Hui Sung was chosen for a random drug test. Tomorrow inspectors will take hair and urine samples. The coach says that their team has never failed the test, so Hui Sung won't fail the test unless he takes something without the coach's knowledge. Hui Sung says fried chicken won't hurt the dough. The coach can't believe his ears and sternly asks if Hui Sung really ate fried chicken. Hui Sung is silent. The coach asks, was the curiua in soy sauce? The guy replies that it's in a spicy marinade. The coach puts his hands on Hui Sung's shoulders and quietly says that the match was announced a long time ago. And he still eats such food? Hui Sung feels like his shoulders are going to break. Fried chicken is already harmful, the coach yells. But have you eaten it in a marinade? Do you have any idea how difficult it will be to lose this weight? Hui Sung screams that he only ate three small pieces and tries to escape. The coach runs after him. Su Hook watches Hui Sung's parenting process. Tu Yong comes up to him and says that everyone who works with Hui Sung is crazy, and especially Coach Park's son Hu. Hui Sung is lying on the floor. Coach Park asks other trainers to work with the guy and make sure he doesn't eat too much again. Hui Sung runs with all his might and is sweating profusely. The coach rides behind him on a bicycle and commands him what needs to be done. Hui Sung then moves on to shadowboxing, then run again. After classes, shower. 
and food consisting of steamed foods. Huisung is not very happy with his lunch. Pereiro is more physically developed in comparison with Huisung. Therefore, in order to reduce the difference between them at least a little, you need to increase his weight to 82 kilograms. And naturally, he needs to maintain a larger supply of water than usual in accordance with his weight. That's why you can't eat carbohydrates. During lunch, the phone rings, and the coach is informed that Pereiro is already in Korea. And Huisung needs to prepare for the interview. A week before the match, on the day of the press conference, the coach says that it's good that they weren't late. Hui Sung is wearing a very uncomfortable suit. Director Han is standing behind the podium. Lee Hui Sung arrived at the press conference. Hui Sung shakes hands with Director Han and says he's doing great. The director says that this is the guy's first press conference, and Hui Sung asks for some recommendations. The director advises him to be natural and not swear. All participants of the press conference are present, only Pereiro is not present. The secretary says something in Director Han's ear. The director addresses journalists and asks for understanding because fighter Pereiro is stuck in Tehran Row traffic jam. They will start by interviewing the participants of the joint event. Pereiro is already 20 minutes late. Director Han is very angry. The journalist says that the interview with athletes Park Ki-hoon and Choi Man-hwan has ended. Although athlete Pereiro is a little late, we will move on to athlete Lee Hui Sung. Lee Hui Sung takes the microphone and introduces himself to the audience and reporters. The first question is, although your past has not yet been revealed, I want to hear your reaction to... Isn't he a newbie? Or, did he work with another organization? There are a lot of similar questions. What do you say to this? Hui Sung says he started training in MMA last July, and his match against Jung Soo Jim was his debut and first fight. They ask him if he really made his debut without qualifying for the league. He replies that Jung Soo Jim's opponent at the time was injured three weeks before the fight, and Hui Sung became his replacement. Hui Sung answers reporters' questions so well that many don't believe this is his first press conference. He doesn't overstep boundaries and remains confident. Every word he says is interesting. He definitely knows how to attract attention. At this time, the athlete Pereiro enters the hall in a very unusual suit. Pereiro enters the hall apologizing for being late. Hui Sung doesn't understand. Does Pereiro really not care about the press conference? Pereiro approaches Hui Sung, extends his hand to him and says something. The translator translates that Mr. Pereiro said, Nice to meet you and I wish you a good fight. Hui Sung shakes hands with his opponent. Pereiro looks at Hui Sung and thinks that there is nothing special about him. He looks more like a girl. Pereiro takes the microphone and excuses the journalists from asking questions. All the journalists are asking about his resignation. Pereiro says that he is bored answering such questions, and is it really interesting? He says that initially, he was not happy about the offer of a fight with such a child. But Director Khan offered him a title shot if he won. The opportunity to fight against the current champion, to challenge the title with a fighter who is a direct contender due to his position in the ranking. Pereiro forgives journalists to mention this in articles and promises that he will smash his opponent. Director Han is about to end a controversial press conference, but Hui Sung asks the question, did the conference take place after the match or before? To get the title shot, Pereiro must first defeat Hui Sung. The reporter asks if Hui Sung is confident that he can beat Pereiro. Hui Sung says that he would not have participated in the fight if he was not confident in his victory, and suggests a headline for the newspapers after the match. Pereiro failed to get the gold belt. Pereiro asks if the brat really thinks he has a chance. Hui Sung replies that he will find out when the fight happens, and his opponent is full of weaknesses. Pereiro replies that it's all a bluff, and there are no facts. Hui Sung replies that there are plenty of facts, as well as steroids in the enemy's body. Director Han demands that Hui Sung stop criticizing his rival. Hui Sung replies that he just wanted to tell his opponent to untie his hair when the match starts. Otherwise, he will burst out laughing when he sees this face. Then a bottle of water flies into his face. Pereiro shouts that he will rip out Hui Sung's tongue right now. Hui Sung says that although his opponent is balding, he shouts loudly. Pereiro shouts in rage that he will kill the boy. Hui Sung addresses the reporters and says that everyone knows that he is a beginner, but not one of his opponents lasted one round. And the only thing that distinguishes Pereiro from them is his love for drugs. This ended the press conference. Afterwards, Hui Sung asked Director Han if he had overdone it. The director said that the topic of drugs was dangerous for their organization, so he was worried. But what's much worse is that Pereiro mentioned the title shot. Now this match will be sensational. Hui Sung says he won't let Pereiro win. Director Han watches Hui Sung leave and thinks that he has no idea how difficult it is to be number one. In any case, events are developing. The match will be interesting. Now the beginning has been made, and all that remains is to watch until the very end. Where will Hui Sung's hunger take him? Hui Sung had to lose a lot of weight this time, but the methods are much simpler. 
Usually the final step in weight loss is a sauna, but this method increases the risk of dehydration. But Hui Sung needs to hold out a little longer. During this time, he noticed that his friend Young Huan slipped and fell during training. Jung Huan's league match will take place the day after Hui Sung's match, and this greatly affects his nerves. Huang will turn 26 next year and needs to debut quickly. Coach Park said that he really hopes that Huang will not miss his chance, and Hui Sung confirmed this. He yelled at Huan to try harder. Match day after weigh-in, Hui Sung conducts training. He practices knee strikes with his opponent, avoids tackles to the feet, throws straight punches and jabs. Finally, he says he needs to rest. Coach Park again noticed Hui Sung's complete relaxation before the match, and I wondered if he would ever worry. The coach reads what the journalists write about the match, and almost all the headlines are only about Hui Sung, and only one mentions the title shot. Coach Park thinks that no matter how their gym prepares athletes, Pereiro is still ranked first in this weight class. But they write mainly about Hui Sung. Any move this guy makes is a hot topic for discussion. Maybe he is destined to become a star. The main event of this evening, Hui Sung versus Pereiro in the lightweight division begins. In the blue corner is Lee Hui Sun, and now he is showing the public his shadow boxing. Commentators say he is confident of securing a place in the main match a year after his debut. Is there anyone with similar records in the Korean MMA arena? He is the only one. Even if we take into account only his skills, he is more than good. In the red corner of Pereiro, he walks with his head held high, showing off his tall and strong figure to everyone. Compared to Hui Sung, Pereiro looks much bigger. According to official records made three hours earlier, Pereiro's weight is 83 kilograms, 800 grams, commentators say. This means Lee Hui Sung needs to be 5 kilograms or more heavier. Will he be able to cope with a difference of 14 kilograms? This is unrealistic. Like Glass and Thibault from SFC, Pereiro is recovering well. Now when they meet eyes, you can see that both have a strong psyche, but it seems as if Pereiro is from a different weight category. If you adhere to the theory that weight affects victory, you come to the understanding that Lee Hui Sun is much inferior in weight even for his weight category. Hui Sung also sizes up his opponent and thinks that Pereiro is shorter than him and has the body of a typical elite wrestler. The referee separates the fighters into the corners. The blue fighter is ready. The red fighter is ready. The fighters met in the middle of the ring, and the fight began. Pereiro extends his hand in greeting. Hui Sun also extends his hand. These are basic rules of decency before a fight. But Pereiro's hand does not collide with Hui Sung's fist, but follows further. Coach Park screams furiously, scoundrel, and Pereiro lands a powerful blow to the head of the unprotected Hui Sung. Commentators are shouting that instead of formalities, Pereiro simply attacked. Professionals should not use such dirty tricks. Pereiro moves like the wind and attacks. Coach Park yells at Hui Sung to focus. Pereiro hits Hui Sung in the head with a crushing blow. Being subjected to continuous blows, Li Hui Sung can only keep up his defense. The coaches realize that Hui Sung received a stunning blow and can only defend himself. A hail of blows rains down on Hui Sung, who cannot move and covers his face. Hui Sung is pinned to the corner of the ring. He's doing poorly because he's already taken a lot of hits from his opponent. The coach yells at Hui Sung to immediately come out of defense and move to the side. Hui Sung moves away from the hail of blows, but Pereiro catches up with him again. And again he strikes him in the head. And then he hits Hui Sung in the body. Coach Park sees that instead of finishing his opponent, Pereiro wants to land as many punches as possible. Although he is unstoppable, unlike Mitsushima, he is completely calm. A hail of blows rains down on Hui Sung. Pereiro goes for a takedown and grabs Li Hui Sung's leg. Li Hui Sung responds immediately and prevents Pereiro from getting a takedown. After defending himself for a long time, Li Hui Sung revealed his face. It is covered with wounds. This is the first time viewers have seen Hui Sung's face like this. Pereiro tries a move and thinks his opponent is very tenacious. He tries to take Hui Sung down, but Hui Sung knees him, and he jumps out from the corner of the ring to which he was pressed. Pereiro continues to attack and thinks that after defeating this idiot, he will take the belt and become champion. He will make a comeback, and everyone who ignored him will become afraid of him. He will prove to this woman and child that he is the strongest. Pereiro throws a jab. He was able to get past Li Hui Sung's guard and hits him right in the face. Li Hui Sung falls and it is very bad for him. Hui Sung gets up and dodges his opponent's next blow. He dives up to his hand. An expression of hatred appears on his face, and he clenches his fist. And he punches Pereiro right in the face. Pereiro is thrown back, his head thrown back by the impact. The next knee lands straight for Pereiro's face. Pereiro understands that he must defend himself, but he doesn't have time to defend himself, and he ends up on the floor in the corner of the ring. Hui Sung says it's his turn to hit the idiot, and now he's going to finish off his opponent. He quickly attacks the enemy and deals him a brilliant counterblow. 
Pereiro thinks Hui Sung's counterpunching is impressive, and he needs to recover first. Now Pereiro goes into deep defense, but Hui Sung breaks through and throws an elbow right into Pereiro's face. The blow was very strong. Pereiro is bleeding. The last blow hurt him badly. The next blow sends Pereiro into the ring net. Hui Sung lands three body shots in a row and has no intention of stopping. Pereiro's defense could not withstand the sustained attack and fell. Each attack clearly reaches its target, and now the blow flies straight into Pereiro's face. Commentators say that the battle is very spectacular. Li Hui Xiong completely bypasses and plays with the opponent's defense. It is worth paying attention to his movements. Either this is the result of long training or incredible talent. Pereiro throws a left jab, but Hui Sung easily dodges it and immediately kicks the enemy in the side. Hui Sung ducks a direct blow and kicks Pereiro in the side again. Another successful kick towards Pereiro. He's not in a good position right now. Additionally, Li Hui Sun slaps Pereiro with an open palm. Now Hui Sung raised his hands. What unconditional self-confidence. This was not just your average hit. He was waiting for the right moment to do it. Pereiro thinks Hui Sung has a fast pace and wants to break him. He makes a tackle at Hui Sung's feet. But Hui Sung quickly jumps out of the grip. Now Hui Sung makes a tackle on Pereiro. Pereiro thinks he will quickly get out of the hold, but instead he gets a kick to the jaw. The takeover attempt was a deception. Li Hui Sun hits a high kick with his knee. His opponent does not have time to put up a defense. Li Hui Sun was preparing for this, and Pereiro did not see the attack coming. A fallen Pereiro climbs onto Li Hui Sung, but he throws his opponent off and strikes again. Pereiro is thrown back into the ring net. Li Hui Sun is about to hit his opponent with a jab, but then it turns out that this is a hook. The technique is quite strong. Pereiro wants to block the blow and then counterattack. But Hui Sung fakes a hook and lands another knee. Now the defeated Pereiro has no choice but to receive continuous blows from Li Hui Sun. Pereiro took a forward point position, in which both hands touch the floor of the ring. In this position, kicks and knee strikes are prohibited. It is too difficult for Pereiro to block Li Hui Sung's attacks. Then Hui Sung unleashes a series of punches on Pereiro. And when he gets up, he kicks him in the back. Then Pereiro wants to move away from Hui Sung. But Hui Sung does not allow the enemy to leave. A very impressive performance from Hui Sung. For the first time in his life, Pereiro felt trapped. And again a series of blows falls on Pereiro. He attacks, but Hui Sung does a brilliant elbow counter. Pereiro doesn't understand who called this monster a newcomer. Hui Sung lands a right hand to his opponent's chin. Then comes a kick to the chin too. Knockout. Li Hui Sung won this match by knockout. Pereiro, the man who had won for the last six years, was knocked out in the first round. Hui Sung exhausted his opponent and won in the first round. How far can Li Hui Sung go? All spectators give a standing ovation. Hui Sung tells his coach that he did it, and now he wants to do what he wants today and not have his coach stop him. Coach Park promises him this. Journalists run up to Hui Sung and ask how he decided to go online in such a critical situation. Hui Sung replies that the situation was not critical. He needed time to recuperate. The protection helped him see potential openings. And when there was the best chance, he struck. Hui Sung also told everyone who bet on his loss that they lost a lot of money. So next time they need to think about who to bet on. Next, Hui Sung approached director Han with a request. He asked if the director thought he deserved a title shot. He says he has won all four of his matches this year in the first round. From the beginner level to his debut, he changed two weight categories and passed all the tests. And today he defeated the athlete whom everyone was afraid of. Li Hui Sung asked director Han again if he deserves a title shot. The director replied that he cannot do whatever he wants. He needs to take into account the opinions of the current champions and the opinions of the veterans, so he will give an answer when he consults with them. However, Director Han continued, Fighter Hui Sung has reasons to ask for such a violation of the rules, so he will not give him an exact answer, but promises that he will give him the opportunity. X1 will continue to promote title matches. Li Hui Sung's coaches were very happy about this good news.